there. No, I am not Mike Bradley. I cannot start a video like that. Hey, what's up? I'm Ben. You are you. This is Sunday Night Hang. Hanging right here on Sunday. Yeah, man. There we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, if you're new, please subscribe. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, I hope I earn your subscription. Learned that from a fellow BC guy. Trav went down a rabbit hole. I've been following this gold miner guy. Dan yeah. Hurt. He's only got a million subs. Probably heard of him. And he said at the beginning of each of his videos, I love it. He says, welcome to my video, Michael B. I hope I earn your subscription. And I've I like, earned it, sir. Like, gauntlet thrown. And I was subbed to him by the end of the first video. Of course, now I want to pan for gold on the Fraser River, but that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. A whole other thing. So, there we got Sweet 16 of people in here thus far, yep. so far. Let's see, I'm going to go right back in the chat. We got Earl! Earl's first one in the, hat, in the house. He's like, what you drinking cool. tonight? Well, a &W root beer, the usual. Uh, Dave Chase is here. Paul McNary. All the cats, including, I think, a couple new ones, because that looks like two kittens on the end. Yeah. I'm just saying. Three cows. So, that, that happened. Sure. Congrats, I guess. Sure. <laughs> we figured uh, earlier we were going to Who else we got here? Paul McCann, Dave Chase. Billy Baloney, he's here. Billy. It is. We know him. Yep. Al Barge is here. Lee. Great to see Lee in here. Nice. Uh, oh, I am half asleep. I did not get a nap after the turkey. Oh, oh. I'm not doing well. Six string stanger, congrats on five thousand subs. I don't know how he did. He says flying. He's getting like hundred subs a week. I get that like every two months. Hmm. He must be doing something right. I don't. I don't know what sure. it is. Fill a fella in. Fill a fella in. Yeah, sure. Uh, who else we got here? There's symmetry. Okay. JP page two. Bird Burfle. All right. William De Silva. Mark Taft. Hey, Mark. Uh, BC Rich 581, Jimmy Biter. Jimmy Biter. I'm uh, caught up. 26 of y'all. The voice of Cornhole. Oh, oh. I wish I had the effects like Seth. The voice of Cornhole. Oh, oh. There we go. Your friend Donnie. He's up around Michael B's way. Who is it? Uh, the voice of Cornhole. He's, oh. he's in the GBA, as it were. <clears throat> There's uh, John ZD351, Michael Pansy. Hey, yeah, there's so, BC uh, Rich. Yeah, we're up to 31 now, just doubled. Boom, dang, dang. so we got a we got a new treat we're trying tonight, folks. Uh, gummy cola, and uh, you good. can read the dosage, they're they're not for the light. That's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 125 a piece, sassy cat. So, uh, I don't know, it's got some kind of hologram on the back. For the counterfeit Trev, I don't know. It's like Canadian mm -hmm. money or something like that. Well, stuff is as good as money in Canada. So, Pretty yeah, you know, I don't know if it's a hybrid or up or down. I, I forget. He didn't ask, and I didn't answer. So, uh, we're gonna see what uh, yeah, 125 at once does. Mazel. <laughs> if anyone can do it, Ben, I got faith in you, brother. May the seal be unbroken. No, that's a circle. Right. Well, either way. We're, we're in now. We did vision. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I, we, did, we did a void. Oh, I can. <laughs> it turns in the word void. You can't oh, see see. So you can't go tampering with stuff. Yeah. See, it turns in the word void. Mm. Focus. Hey, for right. in my life. What's going on? Probably not. Hey, Keith. Keith H is here. Right on. Ah. Go on. Ooh, ooh. They... Spicy smell. Yeah. Guitar Man 45. Woof da. Oh. <laughs> That's just a square. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the Turkish delight things. Fresh. Fresh. Oh. Oh, that's gummy. That's like chewing Coca Cola. Right on. I like those little Coke. I'm catching a cinnamon flavor, though, for some reason. Sure. A little bit. Something. Marcel Blanc, welcome. Excellent. Cushman, thank you. I like Cushman. Hey, Dave Wait, Chase, what's going on? Damn it! Let me know what those like. Out, get my tongue. Must be working well. 
Easy, Ken. Easy. So, hope everyone had a good weekend thus far. Can't talk. Got a mouthful of gummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to process mm -hmm. on it. So far, so good. I still haven't cooked my bird. I think I'm going to be tomorrow now. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm off tomorrow and Tuesday, too. So, I mean it. Nice okay, so. little extra long weekend. Anybody visit family this weekend? I did today. There we go. I'm back. I'm just going to give you all the instructions. I figured you'd eat it, right? Uh, yeah, I went to visit my sister. Nice. As one usually does. Uh, they had they had enough people over, Trev, that I was told to bring my own plate. <laughs> She's like, I only got six plates. You need to bring a plate. I'm like, all right. Yeah, that's a thing here too, BC. Which everyone is freaking out how that's on Easter Sunday. Those who freak out about those things, but this meanwhile, that's been a day trans energy for fifteen years on the thirty first. Easter floats around, so you know, easy room for everybody on the planet. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I went over to my sisters. There were seven of us because there's the girls, and then the girls' boyfriend was there. Got to meet the boyfriend. Yep. And uh, he he got interrogated. He's a guitar player, folks. So <laughs> somehow Good. still has straight A students. I, I I don't I don't trust a guitar player that gets straight A's. Michael B. That sounds like one of those jazz mm. types. You know, play really yeah, kind of read sheet music and shit. I, don't I think those are the guys that can write lyrics too. They probably can know what they're doing, right? But then again, they're not bad. They can look after the money too, right? They're, they're yeah. smart that way. Yeah. So uh, yeah, nice kid. Um, Owns a couple Epiphones, an SG, and a Flying V. Says he plays in a metal band. I said, metal or gent? He goes, nope, we don't do no gent. I'm like, yes! <laughs> we got hope for the future, folks. The kid's 16. I uh, took the Explorer over to show him. He fell in love with it. His favorite bands are Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. Oh, that's not bad. Yep. But then we then we almost had the, the, the family squabble, Michael D., because that's when my, my brother-in-law, Scott, came in father of the daughter, as it were. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, you know, I really like Chris Cornell once he got a better guitar player. Tom Morello, who had, whoa! I, Kim uh, Thiel was one of my favorite and yeah. influential guitar players. Take that mm -hmm. back. I said, it's more like Rage Against the Machine got a better singer. <laughs> mm, I like that's that. how I prefer to look at it. And I can say better singer, Michael, because that's nothing against Zach. Yep. Zach was a rapper. He wasn't a singer. Yep. So, uh, and he was actually, I, we did drop the Pete Thorne name. Speaking of which, I was yeah. talking with Pete today. Missed his live stream today. Didn't know he was live today. But uh, I was texting Pete, and Pete, hopefully, uh, is going to be off tour by May and going to be making an appearance here sometime in May, if we can oh, swing nice. it. He's really busy, but yeah. we're going to try. Get him in here for your birthday. So don't quote me on this, folks. Yeah, that'd be cool. uh, yeah, but I did. I did mention how you know Pete and I are friends, and he played with Chris's solo band the whole time with Yoshi, and he's like, "What?" And then even my niece was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." I'm like, "Yeah, you weren't even impressed with it. You know Taylor Swift's former guitar player. <laughs> you know people." I'm like, "Yeah, I know people." Yeah. <laughs> my sister's just laughing in the next room. So. Yeah, Eddie Faye's here. Cheers, Eddie. All right. Bo's glad he survived a room full of people or a house full of people. I get it. I'll bet you. Probably a busy house over there today. Yep. What's up, Zach? Brother John? Up to 44 watching. That's not bad for, you know, I guess holiday Sunday. I don't know. Yeah. You know I don't know what we had for dessert, Trev, but man, that's all I'm burping because my sister decided to use real whipped cream. Like the 35% right. whipping cream, she put it in the mixer and brrr, and I'm just like, oh yeah. And then she put a dollop that covered whatever the hell it was I was eating. Nice. Homie can't process that. That's like, <laughs> oh, I, I just lactated. <laughs> yeah, I came home. I had a cup of tea to try to thin things out. <laughs> oh, Jeff. You still managed like, to bring home a couple of Tupperwares full of. I did. I did. I snagged, uh, yeah, I did filled up a couple to make enough for two or three meals. I left the veggies. I'm like, you can keep your peas, keep your corn. We'll take stuffing, 
She made entirely too much mashed potatoes, so I did take a bunch of mashed potatoes. And then Excellent. Enough turkey for the cat as well. The cat was not caring that I even left. She literally was in the same spot on the couch when I came home. And then she smelled the food. She, what you got going on there, Ben? I'm like, I got you a little something, something. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm starting to think maybe I should fire up the grill. <laughs> Greg Zeppelin, <laughs> Yeti Matsy Nightcat, Eddie Van Haskell. Right on. See, every time I see Greg Zeppelin, I want to say it like in the voice of Cheech. You're like, Greg Zeppelin! You know? <laughs> now you're doing, man! I do that for now. Hey, it's Greg Zeppelin! I was like, wait, what? It's like I, one of my demos, I did something along those lines. I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, wait, quote of the movie $500. <laughs> well, that could have been a little racist, but hey, I'm just quoting Bubble Boy $500. <coughs> How's everyone doing? There we got 51 people watching for some reason. Excellent. She did not make any lemons. She made some kind of tart thing, Mark. I don't know what it was. Then she put a cubic yard of whipped cream on it. Sounds good, man. Oh, mm -hmm. Well, I, Bo, I like the lighter whipped cream. Give me, you know, the can. It's whipped cream, but in the can, you know, so we can aerate it. It's only 18% cream in there. Uh, and then there's cool whip, right? Don't forget about the cool Yeah, there's cool whip, which is the margarine of whipped cream, really. That's, yeah. The yeah. real whipped cream in the can is not bad. Um, I used to have one of those... Once they get at the restaurants there, you just fill it up with the, you know, 35% heavy yeah. cream, throw in a little sugar, maybe a dash of Cointreau or Grand Marnier, and then you hit that with a little... Yeah. Fancy boy over here, Ken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh la la with the Grand Marnier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I make whipped cream all the time out of heavy cream. The cooking musician. Yeah, man. Yeah. Very much enjoy oh, yeah. that. You know, some kind of tart. I don't know. I'm burping the hell out of it. I, it tastes kind of lemony or something. There might have been some lemon involved. I'm not sure. Hey, there's Brian Hall. We can actually start now. That's a, what is that? A bunch of sheep? What is that? What do we got going on there? Rabbits. 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 <laughs> right, sheep? Sheep rabbit. <laughs> well, I just saw the white. I can't see this. We got Patrick Trace is here. Right on. Good day. See, every time I see Patrick Trites now, I have Gordon Lightfoot's Alberta Bound in my head. D Mac. Oh, we got a question. Hey, guys. What's up? Says, do you have any rules for deciding whether or not to buy again a piece of gear you previously sold or traded? <sighs> what if it's something you miss and you wish you had back? I've yeah. done that. I've done that. Uh, not a lot. There's only I can count on one hand the amount of items that I've bought more than once, and I don't count guitars now, you know, because you. Let's be honest, Mike. You play for 25 years. You can buy and sell a hell of a lot of strats and less falls in 25 years. So yeah, yeah, you know, they yeah. come and go. But certain effects pedals for it, I literally own the same rat pedal three times <laughs> because I, Rich and I just kept selling it back and forth. Back and each forth. Other. Years. And that blue Gretsch went back and forth, right? That blue Gretsch came to me, went back to him. Uh, also, carbon copy delays. I've owned them. I've sold them. I bought replacements. Uh, I really like that pedal. Um, other than that, nah, generally, by the time I actually get rid of something, it's like I just don't use it. I tend not to I'm not even going to ask Trev because Trev doesn't go through gear. He just He's still in gear acquisition mode at this point. You keep it. <laughs> not what do you much mean? <laughs> that, that's part of the reason why that move was so tough. I mean, I, right. I'm a pack rat, but uh, plenty of victories for the pack rat. You know, it's like all of a sudden you need something you put away 15 years ago. Oh, I, I got that. I got one of those. <laughs> right. Remember exactly why you put it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got Josh Danberg in the house. How about Josh? Mark's gas station as well. Right on. Yeah, you know, like I've bought and sold wah pedals, for instance, because I don't become it's a it's a wah pedal, you know, it's no big deal to me, you know, because yeah, I've never owned like ooh, I got the super and repurchased. Oh, there we go. Let's make them big for a second. 
Yeah. Well, you did. So oh, this okay. is my number I, one. You could have sold it. It's a '95 made in Mexico that I uh, got at a pawn shop for trade. I traded a cell phone. Huh. Fixed nice. it up. They thought it was broken. But yeah. I sold it to Guitar Center, and then three days later went back in and paid the premium and bought it. Nice. And then it had to sit in jail for 45 days, even though <laughs> I sold it to them. Right. Uh, BC says he doesn't like P basses, but he likes that one. Oh, it's it's great. Plays better than anything. Well, that's what counts, right? Yeah, and I got the 62 uh, reissue pickup in there. Was just I was looking at a flow chart of Tom Morello's rig today and this telly they had it listed as a 1982 made in Mexico telly. I'm like, they didn't make Mexican tellies in 1982. Hell, they didn't make American tellies in 82, I'm pretty sure. I think that was the only, you know, that was all Japanese made 82, 83 until they relaunched the company. What's up, McCollum Music? Well, you admit it, you haven't actually, you've never sold a piece of gear. Ever. So, like you probably have patch cords from when you were a kid. Here's, uh, uh, BC says, I have a Dylan Tox Tone P Bass P up. I need to, or pick up, yeah, right. I need to install to shoot a video before and after of. How about it during? You don't want to make a video on installing. Well, I... nope. Oh, speaking of girth, right? There's a friendly reminder to switch to live chat. Right, the man, the legend himself, Boner Jams. Good day, happy bunny day, dear. Right. Happy Don't spring equinox. I think that's what it is. I think it's an equinox when it's not a solstice. Isn't that right? That's correct. That's what I thought. Is it different between the moon and the sun or something? <laughs> Pretty much. Halves and quarters. Mm -hmm. I like halves and quarters. Right. Burned flesh is how you get subs. And I believe 60 Cycle Steve because, you know, he's part of a juggernaut operation over there. Mm. Is that Fact. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of 60 Cycle Steve earlier today because uh, while I was over at my sister's for uh, Easter dinner, she was sporting her 60 Cycle Hum t-shirt. So right on. It's right there, right in the face. You've met him, right, Ben? What's that? Have you met him in person? I have not met Steve in person. I've met... Oh, okay. No, what about Ryan? Ryan. I was escaping names. Yes, Ryan and I have met a couple of times, and Ryan's an alum of the channel. I have not had Steve on yet. Is he like this People tall? Refer to reply to my phone calls or so. I don't know. What's going on over there. But we need to get Steve on at some point as well. Is Ryan really tall? <sighs> He's taller than me. Yeah, I think so. So I was shocked at actually how many you know, because a lot of times the entertainment industry, everybody's shorter than you think they are. Yeah. Especially with actors, they're all fucking five five. And then I go to Nam, and everyone's taller than me, and I'm six feet tall. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, China Mike was like six three. That'd be a good topic to discuss because, like, you look at Chris Cornell, and he doesn't look tall, but he's tall. He's like right. six one or six two or something like that. Right. And then you look Robert at other Baker's people compared like to him, and Robert it's like Baker's more like closer to five feet than eleven. <laughs> No offense, Robert, but you're shorter than me. Like, I didn't know Robert Plant was taller than, and then pick somebody. You know, like right. when he's standing next to someone, like he's actually taller. You know. Uh, Michael Pansy has a question. He says, do you have a baritone, Ben? Are they worth it? I do not. However, I have a base six. Which, I, you know. Easy. You didn't reply to the, I'm dying, sis. I don't know what that dessert was. But oof, da may that I think it was the real whipping cream really whipped my ass. That's what that <laughs> cream did. <laughs> Hello, uh, what's that? Bad hole maestro. Hello, Josh Scott is like eight feet tall. Yeah, um, he does actually have eyebrows if you look really close. You know, like you really got to get into his personal space. 
But once you're into Invade's personal space, you'll notice he has eyebrows. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, there we are. Oh, so she did. Like one minute ago. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but Baritone or something like or Base 6 for that, it does a thing. Now, last night I was <clears throat> listening to some, uh, some old classic Metallica. And that Anastasia pulling teeth came on, Ben. And I thought playing that on your base six would be kind of a really cool thing. Yeah. Oh, I was like, see, now there's the reminder that she just texted me. Lemon tart with whipped cream. Nice. Yeah, it was like a full size lemon tart. Oh. That's the, sounds on, on point. Oh, yeah. It was good. But, oh, it's killing me. What's up, Brian? Hope you had a good show. I was. Stuffing my face while you guys were live. Well, he's supposed to be stuffing his face with some baby back ribs at the moment. And loving every minute of it. I sure would. Lactate for my birthday, exactly, Michael. Well, <laughs> it is uh, April Fool's Eve. Actually, I did have a Tums um, a half hour before the show started. So, How, How's that gummy kicking in? You should be starting to feel that a little, no? I don't know. I think so. I don't know. I've had a, you know, I've been hitting the one hitter too, but yeah, I'm feeling kind of tingly. <laughs> so, we'll yeah, another half hour and it should be spot on. <laughs> All right. See you, Steve. Cycle Steve. Yep. Part of it will uh, be um, uh, we'll talk about sights and sounds of San Diego. Hmm. RJ had mentioned on his show yesterday morning about uh, you know one of the best places to live in the U.S. is uh, San Diego and. I haven't been there, but you know I've seen enough of the episodes of Three's Company to know that I would like to live there. Mm -hmm. And I've been like I've been to Orange County, and it's only going to get warmer and sunnier from there, Trev. Yeah, right. Yeah. You just go another hour or okay. so. Ago. So yeah, I've always wanted to visit San Diego. Yeah. Um, why? Oh, Simon, Simon. <laughs> They used to have the Sea World, but I don't think that's a thing anymore. Yeah, or they had yeah Legendary Zoo too. Right, San, San Diego, Diego Zoo. It's one of the legendary. Yeah. So there we go. I I've never been to California. What? It's stupid. I don't know why. I have hey, so many hey, friends there. I only got there because of Nam. For the yeah. first time. I was supposed to go that same year. Work work kept me back. I remember that. Yep, you got you were gonna get a hotel and. At the time, that didn't happen. You ended up at JJ's, but right. Uh, oh, another question, Steve Reza Rezer. Reza Rezer, how's the Gretsch 2622? Is that my hollow body? I think that's a 2600. Good, good, good. I haven't played it in a minute, but actually, I played it a few weeks ago, I think. The zoo has a safari park an hour from San Diego. That's amazing. Oh, there. Ben likes questions. I do because then I don't have to think of anything to say. Right. Stimulates the conversation a little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeff T says it's still raining in the OC right now. Might have to buy a boat. Yeah. Let's see. There's still some big butts in there. Uh, Santa Cruz, I believe, is north of LA. Uh, yeah. Brian. That, that's, that's the San Fran area, but he, he, he was being an innuendo there a little. Ah. Oh. No. <laughs> Because near near Seth, right? Seth is near there, I think. Seth is, yeah. I want to say Seth's a little closer to like Laz, like a little more inland. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was like Oaklanders, like something like that. Yeah. Where's JJ? JJ's in Orange County, basically. He's in the heart of it. One of the Lagunas, not uh, not Laguna Beach, Laguna Niguel, which is <laughs> right next door. So, you don't have the beachfront, and you also don't have the income bracket. That was crazy. Like, <laughs> you're driving down there. It was literally Pacific Coast Highway, beaches with the volleyball courts on one side, Jaguar, Ferrari, Porsche dealerships on the other side of the road. <laughs> this is not a tax bracket I feel comfortable with at all. Right. And it was just like out of a movie, Trev, like in the 80s, because literally we stopped the traffic light, and I look. And there's two blonde-haired ladies in yellow bikinis waiting to cross the street. They, and they look like, quote, California girls, you know? Like, yeah. what you picture it? Yeah, I'm like, 
that you know a little more plastic these days than back in the day. So easy, you know. But you know, I don't think they had day jobs. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure they're professional bikini wearers. Right. <laughs> hey, it works. Ventura has a nice big cornhole tournament. They do. Again, that's north of LA. So I remember uh, cousin Doug was talking about going to that cornhole tournament in Ventura. And he's like, maybe I can stay with JJ. I'm like, yeah, that's like a two and a half hour drive each way. With basically all the LA traffic, because you're starting on one side of LA and trying to get to the other. So, no. Huntington Beach. I think I still have some family in Huntington Beach. That's all in along that area thing. Mm -hmm. The GLA, if we want to call it, Greater Los Angeles area. Laz had a one-hour drive the other night when he was on lawn streaming, and it took him two and a half hours. That's when he went out for lobster, courtesy of you, finally? It was around that time, like the day before. He, he was, uh, I was, someone I, was talking to him. And he was said, yeah, time. it's an hour to get home. And he's like, yeah, but it's this time, so it's going to be two and a half. And it was. Oh, I feel that <laughs> here. Right? Yeah, Vancouver's largely the thing, too. In the middle of the night, two in the morning, I could get downtown in 35 minutes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. During rush hour in the morning, it's going to take you an hour and a half. Boston, yeah. too. And there's no bridges. If, you, if something goes wrong on a bridge, you got to try and get to North Vancouver. Or well, yeah, that's why, yeah, San Fran, Oakland's is kind of the same deal, right? It's very bridge dependent. Uh, mm -hmm. Bo is just throwing it out there. He's excited to see what Gretsch Guitar wants to send me. Ooh. <laughs> I think we are all are a little excited for that. Yeah. Uh, Earl lived in Monterey for eight years. Nice. He used to go to the fairgrounds, set on stage where Hendrix set fire to his guitar, right? Yeah. I hope it's a Billy. Well, uh, Monterey is not where Laguna Seca racetracks up right. in Monterey. One of my favorite racetracks. It's got the corkscrew. Dale Boyle music in the house. See Dale? Right on. Uh, Gretsch was Long Beach, California on Halloween. Only people on the beach were pasty white tourists. I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. Mm -hmm. Long Beach, home of the Long Beach Grand Prix. Which, Ken, I know you're a race enthusiast. NASCAR is looking to partner up with the Long Beach Grand Prix. So is that going to be our L.A. market NASCAR race, which is better than the freaking Coliseum abomination? I hope not. It's better than racing at the Coliseum on that little quarter-mile abomination. Yeah, but Long Beach kind of sucks. I mean, it's iconic. It's well, yeah, you got two dive bomb hairpins, basically, right? <laughs> like, there's no passing or anything, but... Yeah, too freaking skinny. Send him up to the airport. Uh, no, Eddie. Uh, not so much my fear of bridges based on the Baltimore event. That's more my fear of ship pilots and their lack of driving. I've never even considered... It wasn't his fault, though. He lost power. Bridges, so. Over bridges all the time, and I never even... Never even crossed my I, mind. It, something yeah, the me, as long as I don't see visible rust, I'm okay. You know, but the infrastructure, like... If it's crumbling and some of the concrete's chipped away and I can see some rebar, yeah. I am not feeling confident. <laughs> well, all right, Michael B., <laughs> from the chat, was, uh, 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 question for all of us, what is the most expensive piece of gear you witnessed being returned, you or a friend? Witness being returned. Ooh. Yeah, like I can go first to give you an example. I, I was at a campfire last summer, and somebody had a Billy Duffy, the Gretsch, the white mm -hmm. $5,000 guitar. Mm -hmm. It wasn't 100% perfect. It was one tiny thing. And because it was so expensive, he's like, I could live with it. Nobody will know, but I can't. He yep. had to return it. I he was that. in a tribute band for the for the cult, and mm -hmm. I think he lost the gig because of it. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him since, but I all of a sudden, he wasn't in that band anymore. So. <laughs> Tom Reigns? You know what? I'm the same way. I can live with a lot of flaws on a $200 guitar. I don't live with a single flaw on a $5,000 guitar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree on that. Travis is here. Travis Barris at Lafayette, Louisiana. No, I don't want to try the Mackinac Bridge. I Look, I've seen a lot of Michigan infrastructure or lack thereof. Mm. The Ambassador Bridge just coming into town is bad enough, and we all take equal blame on that since it is an international bridge. That's why we got the new Gordie Howe Bridge. 
Oof. Uh, yeah. I hate being at a red light under an overpass, Marsha Murray says. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't like being on a bridge on a red light, because especially because you're sitting there and you can feel little gyrations and bumps, and I'm like, I don't like this. I'm feeling movement. <laughs> the Sea to Sky Highway, where there's you know two lanes, and you got ocean over here, and you got sheer mountain over there, and there's nets on the mountains, because pieces of the mountain are constantly falling, and you see the pock marks in the road as you're driving. And that's a couple of times where I've had to dodge... You know, oh yeah, volleyball-sized rocks. Yeah, that's when part of the mountain decides it doesn't want to be part of the mountain anymore. <laughs> Didn't want to stop there, man. No. Oh, well, I went out a rabbit hole on YouTube a year ago about that with rock slides, and it's just mm -hmm. like you know. And I just call it when mountains decide not to be mountains anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, when mountains have had enough. Bo <laughs> asked, "Would relic count as flaw?" No, no. Uh, Ryan returned a fifteen hundred dollar Epiphone yesterday. I'm oh, not wow. shocked there you go. at all of you returning a guitar, Ryan. You seem to acquire almost as many as Bo, but they don't seem we all stick around as long. I'm just saying, maybe not as many as Bo. That's unfair. Nobody gets as many guitars. Well, he, he turned that uh, octopus and, and, and his SG into a Friedman Kelly. A Friedman Telly? Cali. Oh, Cali. Well, he does the telly style too, right? So that's why I was like, Yeah, he's already got one of those. Well, yeah, big necks. You'd like those. Probably. Oh, yeah. Big necks on Friedman's. I Their necks are too big for my liking. Years ago, 708 returned that Kiesel. I thought uh, yeah. the memory in my head was like 1700 or something. I remember that. And yeah. Doug's wife is real. Mm -hmm. Based on the way that the parts came to him, mm -hmm. I believe the pickups were removed with a pry bar. Oh yeah, like, they're just thrown into a box. They're like, he's like, I don't want to deal with you anymore, and they're like, Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, he's got the worst. He he's got to return like nine and a half out of every ten guitars he gets. Yeah, so, oh, he wants it a particular way, I guess. Well. Yeah. You can't argue with the results. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yeah, like yeah, amazing. But that, but I'm also worried. Is he looking for something that isn't there? You know, you're like you're at, you're looking for a unicorn that the, the, that guitar can't do what you're looking yeah. for it to exactly. Do. I don't know. Well, you know and, a guy that used to do that with American-made Jacksons, didn't he? And that's part of the reason I wouldn't buy a guitar online. Like yeah. if I'm going to spend that kind of money. Yeah. I agree. Well, yeah, especially if you're like if you're spending. I don't know, more than a couple grand on a guitar. Like, what? what's a hundred bucks in gas, Trev, to go check it out? Yeah. You know, if you're going to spend that much. Oh, uh, Bo's asking if it was the... The Adam Jones? The Adam Jones. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, I'm not big on silver bursts. What's up, Marcel? Welcome. I can't it do doesn't feel special now. Silver burst is right up there with gold for me. It's right. Oh, no thanks. It's, it's not for me. I eat too much. Ryan Hall. Hey, Ryan Hall. This looks gray with a black border, you know, I guess. I can't do it. Oh, wow. It looks like Ryan's returned just about everything in the world. <laughs> hey, guitars, I am. <laughs> they don't see John returning much stuff, Trev. He just puts it up on the mar used market. He doesn't, you know. Yeah. He buys it, doesn't like it, he sells it. Yeah. So Travis Barris says that his friend had to return a Gibson acoustic. Brand new, and they're going to replace it. Send a new one. <laughs> That's all. What happened there? I'm guessing some kind of a flaw emerged. Yeah. I think I had that happen with the one, uh, was the modern player Telly that I had. It was all fine till I gigged out on a hot day and a couple of frets started lifting out of it. Like, this is not good. 
Hmm. So that's why I pulled out the backup. <laughs> the backup for the Squire Telly being a vintage Telly. <laughs> because the vintage Telly was staying in the case until absolutely needed. Right. Oh, I got some uh, news regarding the new band, Trev. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> that was a surprise. Yeah, they're... Uh, well... So, you got... Okay, so we're looking at minimum half-hour drive each way, right? Yeah. Because apparently two of the guys lived out in Tweed. We were okay, it was about 20, 25 miles each way, I think. Like 38 kilometers. Yeah, about 25 miles. Um, yeah, and then it was like, okay, you know, here's the kind of music we're doing. So I was told, you know, it's going to be similar to what I played before, a little heavier mix of covers and originals. And I'm like, okay. And the guy put in a couple of clips, and we, uh, Trev heard it off air, you know, mm -hmm. it's like piano piece. And the guy could actually sing. But then it was like, start out the day with he post, same guy. Uh, posted this song that he had recorded all himself, all the part, you know, but it's like program drums, clearly plugins used for all the guitar and bass and stuff. And it was, I have some drop B kind of riff bass, but not, not Pantera riff bass, but you know, just a lot of da -da 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 like not quite genty, but and I listened, I went, what the fuck is this crap, right? He goes, mm -hmm. ah! With the, the band page, we won't want to lose the algorithm. we got to keep our fans entertained, so I think we should post this. I go over to the band page. <coughs> the Facebook fan page, folks, that was created the same time I was asked to join. Mm -hmm. It's got 32 fucking likes. There's no fucking fan base. That's friends and family, folks. Right. And I'm just like, and I wrote right in, I'm like, I really don't want to be part of something my name attached to something that gets released that I'm not playing on because people will assume it's me. Hmm. And he says, how will they assume it's you? I said, because I'm in the fucking band. Right? right? <laughs> and then he's like, all right, well... And I'm like, what tuning is that? You know, I was told we were playing in standard tuning. He never even replied to that comment. Hmm. Shane, my friend, the drummer, who invited me, and he's like, yeah, like, I thought we were looking at doing stuff together. I'm not in release stuff I'm not recording on either. And then it turns out, so I said, like, you know, what are you guys looking to do? Like, if you want to do all original, we need to rehearse at least twice a week for three to four months to put a full set together. If you want to do covers, it's going to be about half the time, minimum. And they're, because they're, I'm looking at the group tech, because, of course, they always talk when I'm driving to and from the holiday today. And it was, well, we could get together every other Friday. Like, every other Friday? I'm going to forget the material if we're playing every two weeks. That's not even, yeah. Not you even know. a hobby at that point. No thanks. You know, and so I got on the side to Shane, and I said, look, I got three criteria with the band. The music has to be good. The guys have to be cool to hang with. And it needs to pay well. Now, I'll live with two out of three. Mm-hmm. And my experience today is zero for three. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, I agree. He goes, I think I'm bailing myself on this. Because he's because he says, like, he's like, well, I can't afford to be driving out there twice a week. So mm -hmm. all right. And then they're like, oh, the guys like, I work, shift work, blah blah blah. So I can't, you know. I was like, and Shane just like, Do you want me to take care of the group chat? And I'm like, Yeah, do you want to start a Dwight Yoakum tribute act? <laughs> He goes, that actually sounds like fun. And I said, well, so then, still talking, he's got a friend. She, female singer, wants to start a Loretta Lynn tribute. And I went, oh, old school. Like, old school country. I'm like, oh, now there's something I haven't approached. Right. So, I was like, well, what about classic female, you know, Song country song, so we can hit the Patsy Clines, the Tammy Wynettes, the Loretta mm -hmm. Lynn's, the Dolly Partons, it all, you know. And he's like, Oh, so he's going to reach out to her about that. So there you go, yeah. Because I told him, like, I'm still interested in doing something else, yeah. like doing something. Uh, this is just, I am not for this. 
The, the guy's like 30 years old and he thinks he's going to get famous or something. When one door closes, another door opens, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I was just like, no, no. Because it's like, well, if we're going to write, we got, oh, and the other thing was, uh, you'll love this one, Michael, because I know, you know, playing original music. He said, we should play a whole different variety of genres of music. I'm like, actually, if you're looking to get signed, you need to focus on one specific mm -hmm. style. Do you know, one thing and do it well. Radio stations have what they call formats, you know. So again, I'm like, again, I disagree, and I find I'm disagreeing with this guy a lot. So I'm just like, every mm -hmm. time, Trev, it's another strike, another strike. He doesn't you know. I'm like, you may think you're auditioning me this coming Friday, but I've been auditioning you since the moment I was added to the group chat, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I said to Shane, I'm like, these aren't good the gigs; are not going to pay well, are they? He's like, well, usually music original bands don't. I was like, which I already knew the answer to, having played in several weeks. But so I was like, yeah, I, I ain't feeling the hang, and I certainly am not liking the music I'm hearing. So, yeah. That's too many negatives. Yeah. So I was like, unless you want a hired gun, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll i do it. Like, I will play with this guy, but you need to pay me a couple hundred a night to do it. Yeah. You know, and I the band is only going to get 50 bucks for a set. So <coughs> if you want to play in a pocket, you know, I'll play whatever you want if you pay me enough. But yeah. My first band I was upset when it broke up wasn't my choice. Everyone since then, a day or two later, I'm in a better thing. Every single time. Yeah. What's up, Mayhem? The, yeah, so. Yeah, and I know Shane's really plugged into the local music scene because he's always been playing two or three things at once. So it's good to have in his ear. And I get along with him great. And I also put it out there like, hey, buddy, I have room to host rehearsal. <laughs> I wasn't saying that in the band chat. No. So, yeah, play for free, but pay me to leave. Yeah, I, well, I kind of said, yeah, I'll pay for, play for gas money, but if you know, it's, if it's shitty music... It costs me a lot of money for me to carry my gear. A lot of money. And it's basically, and I know what the local area pays, and I just price myself out of it accordingly. So <laughs> can't afford me. <coughs> but yeah, so we shall see. I, I kind of wouldn't mind doing like a classic country thing. That would be really interesting. Hmm. Have you got gigable hey, places? Absolute mayhem. Do I have gigable places? You said. Oh yeah. That was one nice thing to see you. Shane well, again, yeah. the drummer. He hosts an open mic at one of the venues weekly, or bi-weekly. He does a bi-weekly open mic at one of the venues. So. Okay, well, yeah, that's a great benefit for sure. <laughs> I but, I'm I'm good. I don't need a hug, but I'll take a hug, Ryan. I, you know. Yeah. I, Bo, I have plenty of space to do rehearsal, especially once, you know, nicer weather. We got the garage. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking, yeah, if I rearrange the living room, like, because it would be a hassle to bring stuff down here unless it's like we're leaving all the gear here, which I'm okay with as well, you know. I just have to rearrange this room because there's not really, as of now, we would have to delete on part of the set. Or, like I say, just play out in the garage. That's that'd be almost ideal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, is you are benched to the left. Uh, Over you're, twenty you're feet, like in done. What's that, Michael? Is your bench to your left? My bench is uh, okay. So the furnace is behind me. He's next to the break the, he's going to break the fourth shop, wall. So my bench is behind that wall. Okay. Um, but. The bench is not against that wall. The bench is on the far side of the room behind okay. that. Yeah. Because that's basically the center of the house. Cool. And this room is long. I <laughs> think it's like two thirds of the house because the whole length of the house was this room and then what used to be my bedroom on the other side of it. <clears throat> well, I can start my own bow. The problem is. Um, I spent the last six plus years hanging out with you guys rather than anybody <laughs> local. So I don't really know anybody local anymore for the most part. So, yeah. 
<laughs> primarily. So that's where I've got the conduit and Shane because my biggest problem was finding a drummer that I could play with. So yeah. I got a drummer. You know? So now it's just a matter of, you know, finding an elusive bass player of some kind and a singer and maybe another guitar player who I can mold in my image. <laughs> Ooh, Buck Owens in the Buckaroos tribute band. Not a bad idea, Sassy Cat. Still, that's some big shoes to fill doing Don Rich. Yeah, where are you going to find a red, white, and blue guitar, though? Oh, fuck. Those things are so expensive. <laughs> for what they are, like they sell for three times what they're worth. That's like It's like a $3,000 Dane Electro. It's just stupid. You are elusive, BC Rich. See, like I know a bass player, but he's fucking Maryland. In the commute. It's hassle. So, yeah. Yeah, I can play in a terrible band. I played in terrible bands. I don't want to do that again. Uh, Zach Thong says, I don't know any locals either than a couple neighbors in my area. Right? I don't know, uh, Zach, if that one neighborhood band is still around. If you open your windows... On a certain Sunday afternoon in the summer, you'll be able to hear a shitty ass version of Running with the Devil. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like I told Shane too. It's kind of been there, done that. Like, I don't, I'm not looking to be famous, you know. However, you know, I'm not afraid to pull a couple favors in through contacts I have in the industry to promote something once I have something done. See you, Ryan. Enjoy those ribs. How much we want to read? Giant Ryan. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, I don't I don't want to do the playing on a show with five bands for gas money. You know, been there, done that. I just don't play covers and get paid. Or, if we're going to do that, it better be fun stuff. And if I'm having a blast, then just cover my cost, Trev. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then it's like, yeah, if I can make 20 bucks, fine. And move my gear. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not looking to do endless rehearsals and and never get out and gig. Either. Although, you know, again, if the music's good, then I'm fun with, just be fine with that. But also, we have the ability we can actually live stream. And we right. demonetize the live stream. So no ads, Michael B. So then we That's don't right. care about copyright claims on the ad revenue. And you just enjoy your super chats and such. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the virtual busking side of things. More fun sitting around. Yeah, it's all like, Michael, you know, what, you want to, you know, carry all that gear around? Just, you know, when we can sit here and you, you don't have to drink and drive, you can, you know, sip on a cold snack. Exactly. And, you know, this, whereas I don't know anybody local, Michael, because I don't even go out to sit, or, you know, I don't even bother going over to Richie's anymore <laughs> to hang around to sit, which is the same conversation that we have here. You know, and I, but now I just do that on the phone with him. <laughs> you know, plus, he's kind of young and around. And I know, I'm lucky. I got Brian, the drummer, to one mile that way. And right. Sean, one mile that way. We met on the internet in a bass player wanted ad. They had for three, they had it up for like a year or two. And I just saw it the day after I got booted from the cover band. And I said, oh, cool. And there, there we go. go. Well, that was even how I got the call. Trev and I were hanging out here on a Saturday night, last Saturday, you know, and buddy's all, oh, well, it's, yeah, because I was supposed to go to a different jam last Saturday, and I, was, I wasn't feeling it. It was old bandmates, but a lot of them, they're all stuck in 2015. Like, oh, so, yeah. like, and that's what they look at as far as your, you know, talent level, we'll say. Hmm. You know, because the last time we jammed together a few years ago, I'm like, can I take some lead breaks? And the singer's like, oh, you play lead guitar? I'm like, yeah, I fucking do. You know, I played lead guitar in the band that we formed after we basically kicked you out of this band, you know. <laughs> but because their head's stuck there, you know, it's like, oh, you know, it's like you show up and they're like, oh, you got a new guitar. Yes. Because it's been eight years since we played in a band together. You know? <laughs> well, seven years. <laughs> yeah. Rant time, folks. Well, apparently it didn't make me overly lethargic. Somewhat relaxed, Trev. Like, I'd just be here otherwise. I'm good. <laughs> Mellow. 
I was going to ask about, you know, about 45 an hour and she'd be, she'd be cruising. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, things are fuzzy. It's like a dream sequence. We feel a nice coziness around here. Like, I feel I'm wearing a virtual hoodie, is what I'm saying. You know, fresh out of the dryer. I can just drink it. Mm-hmm. So. It smells like Coke. <laughs> yeah, I think this, it was like a cinnamon type of spice to it to yeah. try to uh, no, I know try what you mean. carbonation. <laughs> Billy tells how you really feel. Well, that was the other thing. Hey, yo, speak uh, You know, everyone was so nice last week to chip in on a fella getting a new tuner. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, you know, uh, I got to use it. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Mm-hmm. Got it. We gotta, we gotta, so uh, let's see. We got corn syrup, sugar, water, gelatin, citric acid, natural and artificial flavor. That does not have pectin. Yep, vegetable oil. Yep. Coconut and canola. THC distillate. Well, there we are. That, that really doesn't tell us much. That was part of the natural or artificial flavors that I'm tasting. There you go. All the flavors in the neighborhood. <laughs> in your neighborhood. And you said that was how many grams? 125 per. Oh, man. Yeah, chunky ones. <laughs> and you get four of them for 20 bucks. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, four gummies for twenty bucks. So, yeah, I'd chop one of those in half and just do it that way. So I got these uh, these ones here are five one hundreds for twenty bucks. And I cut them into quarters, so twenty five. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, same idea. Michael's like us, yeah. And I did have a quarter of one of those when we started out. I I hear you, Bo. We need the teleportation. We'd be jamming every night. Yeah. Even. Yeah. Man. Come on, Lotto Max. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Lotto Max. Road trip, and it's just yeah. I get an RV, and some dude. Like I'll go down to Nashville, Ken. Some wily veteran, you know, guy that drives for buses for like Johnny Cash back, you know, woo, whatever, yeah. you know. And he's just, he's like, give me a monk in the back. All right, cool. Right on, you know. And we don't get a more, we get a, like, what, a Provo bus. We get a fucking tour bus. So, oh, yeah. yeah. They do oh, nice stuff. You guys see the new, the Pete, they got a double-decker bus? Yeah. Right. Sleeps like 16? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm not keen on sleeping on top bunk, though. That sways. There's a lot of rocking going on up there. Exactly. Like the top of the ship, right? It's like, I would not. That's not a prairie friendly bus. That thing's just go. <laughs> you're like you're <laughs> all over. on the fucking crow's nest. Go take your pain med, Ryan. Join the fun. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if we had that much money, I wouldn't be road tripping. I'd be air no, tripping. No, you like pick me up at the airport because we're all flying. <laughs> oh, that was like ah. Uh, where was that? Last weekend out in California. California? Yeah. Like, let's say, oh, where the hell was it? It wasn't on the coast, like inland, fancy, resorty type area. But it's one of those communities, Ken, instead of built around a golf course, it was built around a racetrack with the mm-hmm. private jet airstrip to fly. Everybody flies in, of course. And, oh, and thermal? Was, oh, was that? Where the hell was that? Palm. Palm something? Palm Desert? It's where IndyCar just did the million dollar... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, ooh, that was some foo-foo shishi shit going on. Lifestyles of the rich and famous shit. Right, yeah. Don't be driving all the way to Iowa next week. Yeah. You know, for living in a... Hopefully the insides of the places are nicer, but the outsides were kind of... Unless, unless you had the major coin to pay for them, but... Wayne? My uh, colonial brother. Uh, for me, substitute coffee for tea because I gave up coffee for the most part a year ago. Once in a while, I'll have an instant coffee. Kind of. And even then, I'll mix it with some hot chocolate for a mocha thing. But. Uh, it was more south, yeah, Palm Beach, maybe. Or, no, was it? 
I want to look it up, but it was cool. And people just had their condos all around this little racetracky deal. And then they got the garages with the McLarens and the Ferraris and the Maseratis and the which I don't know what I tripped in. Maybe I was watching that last weekend, but I've been getting Maserati ads on the YouTubes. I'm like, I don't know what demographic you think I'm in. <laughs> I ain't it. <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll never find it. You know, because if anything goes wrong, I I'm dead. So Yeah, I think it's in Arizona. Was it Arizona? I thought it was like damn I had it again. Dang it's gone. Any who's in housings. Okay, we're talking about Nashville Art Airport. I'd like to ride that train that goes across Canada. Ah no. No, you wouldn't, Lee. Not anymore. No. Any other country, yes. No, because Canada, unlike any other country in the world, every other country in the world, for the most part, uh, uh, don't quote me, Trev, all right, but pretty much, let's just say, pretty much every other country in the world, passenger rail has priority on tracks. That's the way it is in every country, except for Canada, where freight has priority. That's the way it is. So what should be a three-day trip is five. Well, there's not much to see between Calgary and... It's like and, you like sitting on sidings in Saskatchewan for hours there's on no, end. <laughs> I mean, if you fly into to, to Alberta and you go through the mountains, that's a neat trip. You got the whole tunnel and the mountain thing. and uh, Yeah. But and up we are working on it. I will update you, Lee, because actually there, there was a little thing. I think they put it in at Parliament in the last while that they're trying to put it. Hey, can we get some priority? You know, or we're going to have to start twinning up tracks more because this is ridiculous. Because of the idea, Trev, is that, you know, we could just, so we're, some of the rails, we can go full send, you know, because even the, the, you know, the ones that they're normally doing like 65 miles an hour, they, they crank her up to about 80, especially Saskatchewan. There's no fucking hills, or curves, just straight full send. You know, it's going to take you a day and a half to stop it once you get it wound up. Yeah, Patrick no. took a train from, Edmonton, Vancouver, and it sucked 24 hours where I could drive in 12. This is what I'm saying. You, <laughs> Trev, do you like enjoy sitting on a siding precariously on the side of a Rocky Mountain for hours on end and you're afraid of heights? You too can take. <laughs> There's the food car. You go, you get a nasty hamburger. I mean, back in the day when I was doing the trains, there was smoking. You could smoke at least in between the two cars there and that little yeah, door, that. The door open. That's sketchy as fuck. Yeah. Why is sketchy as fuck? Like they well, got the road, with this accordion yeah, thing in the, the middle and canvas awning thing kind of connecting them to each other. But you see gaps and shit. Yeah. And, and it's Jimmy's. It's Jimmy's a lot. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having darts out there. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, thought, if I wanted to eat 500 milligrams of uh, edibles and jump on a train and make a trip out of it versus having to drive. <laughs> more ways than one. <laughs> are we there yet? We've been sitting on the siding for the last three hours. You oh, keep God, asking man. every half hour, are we there yet? We keep telling you, we've been sitting on a siding for three hours. <laughs> sitting up in a dome car, just fucking, wow. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, Japan does have those bullet trains. That Now that's cool. Yeah, see, you know, the European trains. I don't care if they're delayed or, you know, whatever. You're a little... But the infrastructure of Europe is great that way, Trevor. You can hop on a train, and you yeah. can be pretty much anywhere in a few hours, depending yeah. on where you live. Right. Well, well when I visited... The, from what Martin was saying, in train. Germany... Sorry, what was that, Mike? We used the train when we went traveled to uh, the Cannes Film Festival. We would go from right. the hotel to the train to, to the... <laughs> I Film love Festival. that. It's like... You basically wedding crash that motherfucker. I love it. <laughs> I love that story when you're telling it. Although I will admit, you know, like I having not, I will admit, I haven't seen the film, but I may have to agree with Buddy. Titties do make all movies better. I, I'm not gonna lie, you know. No, I, I'm sitting I know. through a shitty artsy movie that I'm not feeling because I like some of them, and there's others. There, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a random pair of boobs. Well, at least I got to see a pair of boobs, you know. But it's got to be in the right situation. You can't just all of a sudden bunny hill it. You know, no, like, it would have yeah. made the film a little bit better because it would have made the villain look a little bit more gritty. 
you know, and, and it, it actually would have helped, but it's a, we didn't want to do it. It no. was more about the group not wanting to finish it. I, I love the fact, yeah, you guys would have just, sup, here it is. I'm both right though. What are the trains we have? If they go more than 60, what if, what, maybe 50, 70 miles an hour maximum speed for one of those? Well, when you're, yeah, but you got to also, you know, we got up, Trev, you know, you add a little banking here and there and, you know, it's up to speed. You know, you, it's like, you, yeah, just existing, but slight regrading here and there, you know, mm. what I'm saying. But otherwise, yeah, I would love to take a train trip across Canada, especially yeah, if I got yeah. a bag of edibles and one they, time when I was a kid, we got the, the thing where you got the room. You know, there was a the one car yeah, 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 yeah. You get you your own little room. You well, came on there with a couple of seats and a fold down bed. Yeah. So a, yeah. To be able to do that as an adult wouldn't be bad. Again, now you've got the you know the wine car. The thing is, where am I going to be able to smoke? You're going to be on the caboose. The very ass end of the train hanging out with the fucking conductor. There's no cabooses anymore. They got rid of cabooses like in the 80s or 90s. <laughs> right? <laughs> These fucking end. Sometimes they got another engine on the other end in reverse. So every time the train stops to, to, to take on more passengers or let people off, you got like 10 minutes smoke break, get back on the train in 10 minutes or you're stuck here. One of the last times I took the train would be mid-90s. So you couldn't smoke on the train even by the mid-90s. Yeah. And I was going from Windsor to come home here for Christmas and then go back the next day. And so to get on the train, to get all the way from the other end of the line, you know, Windsor, which was 500 plus kilometers away, I had to get on the train at like 536 in the morning, you know, like okay. 6 a.m., 5 a.m. departure. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. So we'd be in London by 7. It was a few stops, you know, a couple stops, got into Toronto. I stepped off to have a dart. And, and the conductor's like, yeah, you can't smoke here. And I'm like, we're in the shed. You know, like, it's open air at both ends. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. you know? And then he kind of smirks and he pulls out a cigarette himself. But I was like, I was not about to stop. Right. But then we wait and there was a young couple that kind of, you, know, you tell they were a young couple because they're going to share a cigarette track. You know, those couples, you know, right. clingy or whatever. <laughs> and he goes, what? Hide your smoke. Hey, you can't smoke here. They're all oh, sorry. <laughs> but I can get the fuck out of here. We're all Canadian, so you know. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now ah, you go ahead. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you're cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a long trip because to go from there, then I got in the town. I might have actually got off in Trenton instead of Belleville. Either way, got picked up, which would have been Christmas Eve. I think I came in. Stayed overnight. We opened some gifts in the morning. Got by lunchtime, if not late morning, back on the road. Visited two people, aunt and uncle, then my godparents. I went to visit last summer, and then I was back at the train station in Toronto by you know, like afternoon dinner time the next day to go back because I only had two days off. It was my weekend. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> oh, that killed me. Was it ten hours? Oh yeah, it was a long day. That. I, it wasn't eight hours six, it even 10 no yeah i was gonna say because normally like 401 you could do it in five and a half if you know assuming traffic's good you know, five and a half six hour drive and i think by train it was about seven or eight i want to say yeah it seems like i got in around two in the afternoon or something that's not bad yeah and it was only the one real kind of layover where it was only long enough to get off to have a smoke right Yeah, because it seems to me they did announce, like, when we hit Toronto, like, we're changing over, you know, train, route, whatever, so you have enough time to get off and stretch your legs. I'm like, that means I can smoke. <laughs> I know I know code. <laughs> Those yeah. who don't know. Whoa, do you see that story that Bo's got right there? We're going to start with Billy? Yeah. Oh, there we are. Thank you. In 75, Polish Airlines lot just got off New York going back home crash. Wow. Oh. Nope. 
What's up, Medium Foot? That's a new name in the chat. Evening, Jensen chat. Windsor's his hometown. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I lived there for six months, eight months, something like that. I don't know. Went down there to work at the casino, and then it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. No, that's actually pretty clever. Right? Medium foot, kind of got the Sasquatch thing, but it's not a big, full Sasquatch. It's a medium <laughs> Sasquatch. Yeah. Size, and it's good guitar. I mean, I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, my friend. I'm going to go, I don't know. Bust I'm feeling good. I'm feeling I real good. I bet. <laughs> it's time to smoke some weed. I'll go, I don't know, until the bottom of the hour, and we'll see where it goes from there. All right. I'm feeling kind of lazy. No, I thought about it. All right. Next more sugar. I still got two days off. I got nothing to worry about that doesn't go 10, 15 minutes away. Yeah, I'm not working tomorrow, so woo-woo. I am. Damn it. I got the show tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. It's me right there. Tomorrow night. Can I, I guess I kind of do, too. <laughs> yeah, try to do work I tomorrow. <laughs> we got a set to do tomorrow. Yeah, we're working tomorrow. So, yes, uh, I'll be playing some songs. I don't know what I'm playing. Um, I'm not sure which pedal board I'll play through because I replaced some stuff since last week on this board. And I'm kind of liking yeah. how it sounded. And some changes. Yep, we did. It's pretty much an all Lawrence board again. Um, because Lawrence makes good shit. Like yep. I'm, I'm just, I didn't want to go all LPD, Michael, because the last time I made a small jam board, it was all LPD pedals, you know, which is the ultimate yeah. board, you know, Kinda in cool. many ways. it was great. But this time, you know, so I had a different, you know, like I said last week, so I had the radial on there yeah. for the drive, um, had the phaser and uh, my uh, chorus, what was that area? A Kai. Took out the radial, put in the 87. Better. Damn yeah. it. All right. So, well, there goes the phaser, because now I need a boost. Yeah. So, all right, put that on. And then, literally, and then I took the boost off, put the LPD chorus in, so I could AB the two choruses, you know, and dial them, literally dial them in the same. They're both mm -hmm. four knob. Mm, the LPD's better. Damn it. All right. Well, you know, it's like, <laughs> It's just better. Cause, well, because it has a blend, yeah, which was right. really nice. Because then you can just easy, you know, and because you can get fairly dry, but then it, let's put a little underneath just so you're like, what are you running there? You know, am I hearing something or am I not hearing something? Because it's dry, but it's not. Reminds me, I still need to get that sparkle drive. I really should order that sparkle drive. They um, are fine. Good to see you, Randy. Long time no see, you, Randy. <laughs> Cheers, I didn't say hi because honestly, I thought he was here earlier, and but then I saw somebody, and then yeah. Sorry for those joining in. A fella, where the hell are they? Ate one of these, which is 125 milligrams. So he he's feeling good as yeah. well as he's had several puffs off the puffer thing. You know, it's not a cigarette, <laughs> but but it does kind of scratch the itch. <laughs> it does because I get to hold it in my hand. Right. You know, it's he feels yeah. like he's smoking, but he's not. Style. Yes, it's yeah. You know, and I think they gave one of the. I think it was literally the first time I showed up at Better Buds. They gave me one of these. Hey, you want yeah. this? Fuck yeah! Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. Does it's LPD gonna... make a phaser? No. Everyone should write LPD and say, "We want a phaser. <laughs> we want a phaser. Want to play Waylon?" Ooh. I should have mentioned a Wayland tribute band, Trev. Mm, nah, you're smoking it. <sighs> Next time. That's okay. That's okay, medium foot. We what? Whatever, whatever rubs your Buddha. That's my motto. Whatever rubs your Buddha. Whatever gets you through the night. See, edible full in at this point. I, I, I've been smoking doobies too, and I do like me a good dab. Yep. Uh, I usually okay. smoke doobies when I'm upstairs. Enjoy the, uh, the gummies. Maybe I should have another 25. I, You know what? I could play Michael. Ah, now I'm feeling ah, I'm a little nervous about playing right now. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I could play. Now play well? Yeah, I was going to say, that's a lot of edibles. That's a lot of pressure. Um, yeah, but and the funny thing is, Michael, you're like, I used to play drunk. 
you know, and I still feel mm. way more tactile than if I was drunk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Especially if you practice that way. Oh, yeah. Well, That's what we did. did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think in a sense, like, especially geeking live and, and like having a beverage, like I'll do a set and have a beer, like sip on a beer through a set. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> you know, poor beer. Our, my drummer in One Day to Live, Mike, because, you know, he was 18. You know, so got you know, so yeah. didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't do any form of drugs. You know, Young no and cigarette, nothing, right? <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, "He's a matter of practice." I'm like, "Whew, pretty fucking baked." He's like, "Man, how are you supposed to remember it to play it live if you're baked when you're learning it?" I was like, "Well, because I'll be baked then." He's always like, oh, so you're just I'm like, "Yeah, when do you assume I'm ever sober?" <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, Marcel, that sucks. Edibles? Can you do the edibles? Is the CO, CPOD or COPD or? Actually, the, the new band, I we wish over. Practice rehearsal, gigs, everything. It's great. Yeah, I just I, do my thing. You get right to business. I find too. I you're less nervous. You're more, you know, especially with you know, like you say, Ken, sipping on a beer. Like I'm never, I would get drunk per se, but sipping on a beer, like one. Be- and especially, I would have usually a beer for my first set if we were doing three sets, and then I'd have a light beer for sets two and three. Even I could just do that, you know, switch to something lighter. You <laughs> late, yeah, beer. Well, you <laughs> well, I had to drive, so oh, okay. Marcel makes his own edibles. Well, there you go. All right, I, I do cool. as well. That's a real fun. To do. Are we talking like cookies and brownies, or are we talking like your own? There we go. Gummy bears. The problem with the gummy bears, Ben, is you eat the little thing. What's up, Seth? And I want more gummy bears. Oh, I have a bag of gummy <laughs> bears that, on it. That, that tastes like really good. good. And I'm not planning on tasting that again for a while because that, mm. that was good. And that's a dose all at once. Mm. We made chocolates in a mold when it came out. I remember right. that. Yep. Did you I'm make sorry. a video about that? No, I showed you on a private hang. That's what it was. I was like, <laughs> how do I know about that? I See, again, like, did I dream that, Mike? Like, no. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did that I That was know? private hang, yeah. <laughs> That's not icing sugar. No, Mike, uh, Michael Krause, he says, light beer, is that for people who just like to pee? No, it just tastes like American beer, then. Canadian light beer is just American beer. You <laughs> technically, I'm drinking American beer, <laughs> but it's five percent, and it's made by Labatt. It is, and actually, in most states now, it's five percent as well. It's better than the American equivalent, though. But it is—it's kind of pretty different. much the same. Hip, get a beechwood headache. And I only say that because <laughs> not the first person to say that. Through no. Yes, 2011 through 2017, I drank a lot of Budweiser. See, I, I um, bought it because the 30 bucks my primary sell. beer, Ken. 14 but, bucks off. <laughs> that's what my bandmates all drank. So, and it was always, it turned into the new Heineken for bands because it was the beer that's available at every bar around the world. And they pretty much uniformed the taste around the world by the 2000s. And I get it. Because that was the thing about Heineken. Like, you'd always see Metallica drinking the Heineken squad. Yeah. Well, and, and right? Jeff Haneman with his Heineken. Yeah. And that was because you can get Heineken anywhere around the world at that yeah. time. You know, anyone have a Heineken? It's not the most pleasant beer in the world. It's got to be cold. It's got to be fresh. Check the date on that oh, bottle of beer. Yeah. Uh, one of the best on tap beers I've ever had was Heineken on tap with a fresh keg of Heineken tapped into a nice clean draft system. Uh, I've had the draft Heineken. It was pretty good for a draft. I, I tried to force myself to like Heineken for mm-hmm. that reason. Like, right. and then I was like, no, I ain't drinking this shit. And then I noticed Budweiser's every fucking where. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. right. I'll buy that. Budweiser. You know, and generally, every time somebody bought a round of beer for the band, it was always Budweiser's. Because they asked her, what do you want, Budweiser? I'm like, fuck you! I like blue! I love mm-hmm. blue. Very or fun. then I got into Bud Light. I drank a lot of Bud Light as well. Because, again, it tastes the same to me. Bud and Bud Light. Ugh. 
I stay, stay away from light beers. I mean, the lightest I get is like the Cronus. I think are only four and a half. Well, I think two uh, is the, the Miller High Life. The, the champagne and beers. I think they're only four seven or something. Well, that was the other reason. Yes, because you know, six feet tall, weighed a hundred and a half, not mm. eating right. <laughs> it's like it's, we gotta we gotta cut some corners somewhere. To, you know, yep. Variety of lifestyle choices going on at those shows. Mm -hmm. Although it's funny, I was uh, explaining to uh, the niece's boyfriend today. Is he want to try mason jar slide on the Explorer? And I'm like, no, you're not. He went, oh, no, I'm not. I'm like, no, you're not. I, I'm like, a beer bottle works. I'm like, so I told the advantages of an empty beer as opposed to a full beer. You know, I myself, I like a little weighty because I'm doing it from above with just hold it by the neck to play mm -hmm. beer bottle slide. You know, some people hold the beer bottle from the bottom and play slide that way. I, I, I hold this way, Trev, because as soon as there's an open spot, then it's like, like snag a sip. Right. <laughs> that's that's the advantage of having the full one is you get to snag a sip, but it goes flat very fast if you're doing any vibrato and you're tempted to <laughs> and right. it everywhere. So take a couple sips out of it first. I guess. Exactly. You want to get her down. Let's get her down into label territory. You know, like. Dribbles onto your pedal board, short okay. circuits, and then yeah, you're totally you're screwed. Ooh, Randy Price, Jesus, yeah, yeah. Coors Banquet, I'm like easy there, South. I <laughs> just call Randy South. But Randy, like, let's go here, and Randy's just gonna play all the gear, stink up the show. Yes, like, who went live more times yesterday, Trev, Quentin, or Ryan and Randy? Ryan and Randy did a guitar safari. I know yeah, they did. Cool. I'm saying and, it. Like, and did, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, all, it's all the notifications. Quentin's live. Ryan's live. Quentin's live. Ryan's live. <laughs> it was kind of a juggling act there yesterday. It was interesting. I, I, I missed a couple myself. No, oh, he went to Righteous Guitars. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the PS de Resistance was when Randy got to Ryan's house. He got to right. plug into Ryan's Wet Dry Wet and play all of Ryan's selected, well-set-up guitars. Yeah. Yeah, kid in a candy store, man, for sure. Hell yeah. And we, we kind of live vicariously through you there, right? Yeah. That, is that the thing, right? Yeah, well, well, and the thing is, in all fairness, Trev, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen often, but it does, is when those of us in this community actually get to get, see each other in three dimensions, as Michael and I have said over right. the years. Finally get to meet in three dimensions. You know, that's the ultimate. Yeah. And when it happens, you know, it's, that's the, the cool thing. Although Walla Cry is another new name in here. Walla Cry is <laughs> and Randy's roommate. Oh, okay. He's, he's like, easy. No, but, you know, that is the cool thing about it. And, hell, I did the same thing when I went out to California the first time playing all of JJ's guitars. Oh, man. They were up till 3 in the morning. Kid in a candy store there, too, for sure. Oh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it's like the different heads. He's got so many different. What amp yeah. do you want to play through? Well, no, see, the first night, yeah, but Trev, I didn't get there till like almost midnight. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. like after midnight by the time I got there. So it was already. No, three no, but on a trip like five, that, five, does it really matter? No, I, there was times where I worked until eleven o'clock. I mean, midnight was just getting warmed up. <laughs> I started the day at seven forty-five a.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. So Trev. really, I arrived at his place at three in the morning. It was a long fucking day. Believe me. Because I got rerouted and stuff, but it's all good, brother. And then we got there, and then it was all you know. So I didn't plug in because it was kids sleeping, school night. Right, right, right. So <laughs> I'm just whew, guitar after guitar, just playing them acoustically, and then you know, yeah. and, and then by the time you played the ninth guitar, you forget about the one, and then all of a sudden, oh, look at this! There's Les Paul. Oh, it's that one. <laughs> you know, all right, all right. Fret <laughs> and I played that a lot because Mazel. Everybody seems to love it. Well, you can you can play like Martin didn't put it down, right? You, you can play pretty much anything else. Well, right. not pretty much anything else. That's unfair to. But there, a sixty-eight Les Paul is such a unique thing. Like you're not going to find another Les Paul with those kind of frets mm. and those pickup, like. You have to play one of those. They're the only ones, you know, for a couple of years that were built that way. Right. So, you know, you can get reissues of pretty much everything else, and it's faithfully great. Great. Like today's RG550 is very similar to JD's, JD's vintage RG550. They haven't really mm -hmm. changed a lot. You know, his vintage universe, modern universe. 
Is Vincent Charvel Marlon Charvel? Aha! Well, that's a good question. The new ones are not like JJ's. I will say that. His, the neck is bigger, uh, for one thing. And I thought his guitar was a little heavier, too. Well, maybe just that particular guitar, but... And also German Floyd, right? Because that's all there was. There was no such thing as a German Floyd back in the 80s. It was just no... It was a Floyd. <laughs> it's like, they're all German. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be a pound difference. Yeah. A couple of ounces, maybe. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing major. Yeah, so, you know, his PV Wolfgangs, you know, they're out there. His Ernie Ball, they're out there. Mm-hmm. I thought I'm saying I haven't played a lot. There's a lot of stuff he's got now that I, he didn't have when I was there. Mm -hmm. I played E90 Les Paul. He had that. Eventually, my pickups went into. That was the one he refinished in green. Cool. Oh, Lee. Yeah, he says I'd love to play around in Tim Pierce's studio. Although I'd probably break something in the computer. Oops. Yeah, I okay. Maybe we're gonna have to do a poll, Ben, because Tim Pierce versus Pete Thorne. For, for you, get, you get four hours in the guy's studio. <laughs> Room of <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Tim yeah, Pierce. <laughs> hey, I'm like Trev. I'm, I'm bold enough. Do I put my name on that list too? You get or four hours in here. <laughs> <laughs> I could spend four hours in that room and have a lot of fun. I'm just saying. There's a, no, there's, there's a lot of gear in here, too. Yeah, I'm just saying. A lot of it has to do with the, you know, the person behind the scene. Or, let's see. Who else, who else could we put on that list? RJ's room? Mm -hmm. RJ's got a nice room. And, well, you got to throw Michael Torn in there. Oh, that's all the room, then. That's everything. Mm -hmm. I'll say more Michael Nielsen than Michael Torrin. Yeah, more of a YouTuber yeah. per se. Oh, God. Well, I would want about Matt Johnson. Dave Friedman himself. himself. I mean, that that, oh. that, okay, that changes, oh. right? It's oh. not the same every time. Beato's got some nice fucking gear. Touche. Yeah, true that. True that. Right? You know yeah, that? You know what, Trev? That mm -hmm. might be the top of the list because he does have some nice vintage amps there. And shit everything. Where... High watts and, and Yorks and... Yeah, I oh. all the marshals. Yeah, Randy Price says Beato Studio is about twenty five minutes away from me. Right? Yeah, but it might as well be a million miles. <laughs> well, maybe not. No. We're still hoping for a oh, random right. encounter with Randy or or Ryan. They're both in that area. Um, yeah, I'm sure. at Home Depot. Hey, Rick, how's it going? You want to come hang out on a Sunday? Jam on some tracks? <laughs> no, no, you want these nails, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rick yeah, Beato take... live when it's Randy Price this time instead of Nuno Trev. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> if I could take anybody's studio from YouTube, it would be Matt Johnson from Jamiroquai. Ooh. Because he's got Fender Rhodes and all yeah. kinds of vintage gear. Unbelievable keyboards. Yeah. Moogs. The Arcs. more he met, yeah, the Fender Rhodes, that, like, I don't even know how to play keys, but that's kind of on my bucket list. Like, I'm like, do I yeah. want a synth or do I just want one of those? And it was especially when I watched the Beato Mike McDonald conversation interview, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, that's the sound. Like, forget it. You know, that is yeah. it. I need that over a real piano any day of the week. Cause that's kind of the stuff I want to play that. Yeah. Oh, there's a chord that cool. has a couple of those sounds in it. That's really, really I good. Sound. Yeah. I played Rhett Schull's Pink Sparkle Novo. Hmm. His original Novo. That's wow. the first Novo I ever played. <laughs> and Michael, you know me, like sometimes, especially when, like, when I have a cold snack into me, I, I don't care. You know, it's like asking <laughs> people to dance. The worst they're going to do is say no. So I'm like, yeah. hi, you know, like Aaron, <laughs> Aaron introduced <laughs> us to each other. Yeah. Right. At this Novo party. And when he, he brought in the guitar and he had hung it up on the rack on the wall display stuff tea cake and i'm like hi right nice to meet you can i play your guitar <laughs> he's like yeah man go for it so grabbed it went down the hallway slightly so it wasn't as loud and i could hear it better i was just sitting there just 
jamming away on it for like five wow. minutes. There, Eric comes up, just a shitty grin of his. He's like, "What you doing, buddy? You avoiding everybody and playing the nice Novo?" I'm like, "Oh uh, yeah." yeah. <laughs> He's like, "RJ just showed up." I'm like, "Oh, RJ's here." <laughs> I went outside and asked RJ if he needed help bringing anything inside. Yeah. I forget what he brought. He brought something though. And Zach from Mythos Pedals was there because he supplied the pedal board. Which kind of makes sense now that he's working out of their space too. Like he's got part of their factory space for his pedal building, I guess. Which yeah. I say part of their factory. Factory. I'm using a term like it's a fucking strip plaza. <laughs> it's a unit. It's like one of those strip plazas, you know, you see kind of in industrial parks, but it's light industry, Trev. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You know, it's like a plumbing supply. Them, you know, it's like, you know, your Brafascos are there, your Fastenal. Kind of a cabinet maker somewhere in the mix. For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ben, was that the same trip where uh, Mary Spender was walking in? No. Where's Red no, Show? No. Where's Red no, Show? We don't talk about that incident <laughs> on, on the public <laughs> here. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, that was NAM 2020. That uh, I'm talking about summer NAM 19. Oh, okay. Nashville, baby. That was, yeah, that was fun. And I actually had to turn down a hang. Sorry, TK. Uh, Tone King texted me on the way. We were on our way to the Novo party, and TK texted me, say, hey, you want to have some pints? I'm like, ah, I'm busy. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have loved to. Right. Because he was right downtown, too, I think. So we could park in their hotel and parking and, and do whatever. Hit Broadway, although I did up hitting Broadway on the Saturday because we, yeah, we, I played hooky from the last day in AM, which I think they opened up to the public. That that was where that whole original thing came from. Was the summer name was the last day they opened up to the public, and it's just like ah. you got every Nashville picker in town, you know, walk around. Town. I'm not playing anything. I'm not getting near anything. <laughs> so I went and hung out the music. We went to Carter's music instead, and, and then I went to Broadway and got drunk. Perfect. <laughs> and a good time is had. Oh, from what? From what I've been told. <laughs> Although I do remember running down a flight of stairs because we're on a second floor bar. And then it came on some fucking abomination, Shania Twain knockoff, countrified version of pour some sugar on me. And I'm just like, nope, down my beer. Boom. <laughs> and then if if there was a possibility of a cloud in the shape of my body from where I went, as Aaron was mocking, he goes, I've never seen you run before. He said, I didn't know you could run. <laughs> yeah. Like a bad pop trip. <laughs> oh, and then I thought I ended the vlog and I thought I forgot I ended the vlog. So I just kept cutting in scenes of me ending the vlog and I just hammered. Oh, I got to take that down. I can't leave that up. And then RJ went live like the next day. He's like, saw your video. You did it the right way. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> leave it up. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't puke and piss in public <laughs> within 15 feet of a sidewalk in a parking lot. It depends. <laughs> I think it was only like three car stalls in. You know, In the case of an emergency, I mean. Yeah. You know. Watch Nudie's live stream from Nashville something bright. Yeah. Oh, it's, it was something. There's a whole lot of people there that had no idea Summer Name was even happening or could care less. Mm -hmm. How's everyone else doing out there? We made it to the bottom of the hour. Uh, uh, I don't know. I still oh, got to go to the top of the hour, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got 46 watching. We actually go for two hours, go for a long one. Mazel. It's Easter after all. All right, Michael. Yeah. You're on. Game on, mofos. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm on edibles. 
I don't think that's a free story, Medium Foot. That's a channel member story. <laughs> I only remember what I said, so I kind of feel bad now. That's okay. Oh, I, that, no, I was making a point of talking over just in case you did. So <laughs> I, I was like, come here. My, no, no, no. <laughs> that, that, that was, that was an aside conversation. Yeah. Ixney on the... I can't play the bunny hop. Not recorded, not broadcast. There we go. Ooh. All right. Do I just play acoustically? Is that okay? Does that qualify? Or do I need to plug in? You you were teasing the uh, tones of the new pedal board earlier. Oh, shut up, Rev. Jesus Christ. If you had the <laughs> I, I, I'm on it. I mean, Ken, Michael, we have to shut up. When he's oh. playing, because I'm going to turn off his echo cancellation. Have to right now. Give me a second here. Yeah, yeah. Me up. I'm just running the prep. All right. Oh, what am I playing with? Uh, oh, I, th I thought I had to get Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> oh. There you go. What am I going to play? Do you have a request? Was that? Oh, he said like it. <laughs> uh, uh, why is unbelievable all of a sudden messaging me? Oh, it's about time. Fuck, tell him he's late. Watching, but not all right. All good, bud. Thinking of you too. Uh, All right. I, I know tonight, today is a certain day for him as well. I do believe. Or was I only give you a hard time because we miss you, brother. Yeah. Uh... Tone, Trev. Well, uh, if you're going to go louder, I'm going to have to switch up your audio. I turned your back cancellation on. Just because we did mention the tone. Problem child. I was like, oh, did I hit that off the corner of the desk? No, I didn't. I hit it off a capo clamp to the corner of the desk. It's like a right. free bumper for your deck. And you're back. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. You know, I got bills to pay. Oh, you can make the monkey dance. You just got to pay the monkey to dance. <laughs> right. Okay. Conversation band. <laughs> and I will be playing a bunch tomorrow night because I will not be eating one of them. <laughs> says it'll be, Ken knows it'll be me sitting there for 45 minutes going, which I play. What did I play? He's like, look at the fucking chat. We've been suggesting songs for 45 minutes. Which I play. Which I play. Trev's popping in. Ben, 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 Ben. Oh, what? Hey, Trev, what's going on? Is the show over? No. 
No, the show is not over. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> got 25. Marcel says your phone, Mike. I don't, I'm not using a phone. Right. Using a snowball. Phone. Yep. Booja. Is this snowball blue? Like blue or something. And the crazy thing yeah. is, <laughs> I definitely noticed that you're only playing through the Marshall. Right. For, for as much as it's it's just a single microphone, it does pick up that. Well, and because that pushes more mids. Right. It's it it more focused that way. Yeah. That's the surrounding. Well, and it does change depending on where you're sitting. And I have been scooping the mids a bit more yeah. on that pedal, too. Uh, Hip, are you able to play through with any volume? Acoustically. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no amp. <laughs> That's worth 99 cents tops, Michael. <laughs> and amp, amp is about five miles away. Kind of a mid move at the moment. Consider, become, become a channel member. Excuse me, we may be doing it. Yeah, well, well, I'll just say it because we got backup here. Uh, Water Buffalo meeting this coming Saturday. This is the first, we will first not be recapping my uh, first band practice with the new band. <laughs> Right. That was going to be the topic du jour, but <laughs> nope. Spoilers, it's, it's over. Yeah. Mia oh. broke up the band too because the drummer's oh. no longer interested anyway. <laughs> I want Acoustic Explorer too. DC, just saying. That Kramer Farrington with an Explorer shape, they did one. An Acoustic Explorer. Yeah, sounds like ass, but it looks Not awesome. It, I mean, those, those aren't. Sound wave conducive angles. <laughs> hey, <laughs> damn! I had to get up and plug in and everything. Can <laughs> what was supposed to see? I could be back in a half an hour. <laughs> you mean Osta? Why wouldn't you just say I'm going to see Lynch Mob next? Well. Time? No, he's got family obligations. You know, we uh, know. At this Dr. point, Turns though, it's a week way. away, Ben. You'd think he'd got it sorted out by now. Mm, no, <laughs> no, no. Especially, well, what's been? Jeanette's been going through Fair some enough. shit. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. In theory, because I remember he was supposed to go to a show. I think he was supposed to go to the same one Jim was going to. Remember, he was supposed mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. Couldn't go. So. Supposed to. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. As of now, the plan is... Well, our fingers are crossed, Bo, that you can go and see Lynch Mob on right. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, uh, one week from tonight, we got a guest booked. What's up next Sunday? Who's up for a guitar lesson next Sunday? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> How about a guitar lesson from Robin Crosby? Oh, oh my goodness. Dun, 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 dun. Charles Green will be returning. Charles Green to me for sure. Yeah, so we'll have Charles Green on, and he's right. going to show us the lesson, Michael, that Robin Crosby showed him back in the day. That is awesome. I can't believe he's going to open the vault and show us the key for the way yeah. he. Shreds. I believe it's about. I think it might be related to like three notes per string. Hmm. Which, when you learn that, that really opens up the shred during it, you know, like your speed. Mm. You know. So, I, I think, I think, I'm just guessing because I know Robin was good at that. I know he showed that to Charles. Yep. That so, yeah. So, wow, that's great. Right on. Which, Looking you know, like, and for those that have missed like, Charles the Shredding, either on his channel or hanging out on Yo Yo 812 Crew's community jams, you say, how do you. You got lessons from Robin Crosby, Trev. And that was what? You know, in, in the eighties? In the eighties. Mid eighties? Early eighties. Basically, mid. Yeah. Early to mid. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Charles right. can shred. He's been playing for a while for sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? Yeah, I thought so, Bo. So. Cheers, Sassy. Sassy hangs out at the uh, Buffalo, Buffalo meeting. meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. They're a blast, actually. Eric, you can oh. take Sassy Cat's seat. Sassy Cat's just leaving. So, Eric, ooh, yeah. 
Right on. Hey, Chef. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, I think we might have 20 minutes left. Oh, I'm getting wolves. <laughs> the turkey and the animal. Woo! This has been an uphill battle, Trev. <laughs> Stripped a pin and we like didn't get a nap in bad. between getting home and the show. I wanted to. I had a cup of tea, but that's not the same. Good root beer. Join me a root beer. So, yes, Water Buffalo meeting this coming Saturday. Charles Green this Sunday. Me tomorrow. Uh, we got a couple demos already done this week. Oh, lifestyle choices indeed, Matt. Hmm. Indeed. Just saying. I don't remember what the other demos are. A phone? Another rep phone? Yes. A flying V up a phone. Excellent. Well, not really. I, Speaking of flying Vs. You're going to sit down and stand up with it. Oh, I sat down. I sat yeah. down. I wedged. I clenched tighter than if I saw, you know, a panther walking by. <laughs> clenched. <laughs> Full clench. Uh, almost squirted the guitar. I was clenching so hard. Mm -hmm. you know? right. um, yeah. Cannot so play that. with that. And then uh, what the hell else did I play? Was it a Telecaster shaped object? Might have mm -hmm. been. No. Wait. I have no idea. I just did it. Last week. I just shot him last week. It'll come. Just let it run in the hard drive for a minute. <laughs> no. I played so many damn guitars in the last year. For sure. Uh, oh, Marcel's headed out. Cheers. Adios, amigo. Uh, have a good night. Let's see. Content. Oh! <laughs> Not a telly. A gibby. <laughs> a signature gibby. A slash gibby mm. with the mm. appetite amber finish. That's right, right. The first guitar of the day I played in there. I think I saw it on the used rack, Trev. I'm like, wow, well, let's just yep. snag on this and make a video. Mazel. Well, it pads the stats, right? Because I'm not, you know, you just at some point you can only do so many less ball like. I've already well, done all the guitars. Now I'm just doing different finishes to make different I would seem that the algorithm does favor some things that are maybe new, that, that stuff that people are Googling and searching, right? Yeah. Oh, Ben, you did a cool thing this week. You put out a video early to members only. Oh, yeah, I did. That was really yeah. cool. Thanks for doing that. I freaked the fuck out of Ryan, though. I, I, and I called it. I, I said to Trevor, well, I'm going to try this because I mentioned on the Monday show. Now, Ryan, I love you. And I'm not throwing you under the bus. Well, I am a little. And, but he's been busy with mother, right? Mike, we yeah. know that, right? He goes yep. back. He's, so he, he didn't catch it necessarily. And that's why he mentioned how you know, I want to try doing that. You know, the members first. Kind of messes with the algorithm. Didn't like it at first because it didn't All count the views. views. Didn't carry over from the members over for some reason. Yep. Although now it's all of a sudden today, YouTube's like, oh, you put it in a video, all right? So they've been promoting it kind of all day, which is kind of cool. That's cool. Um, which they've been doing. Thank you, YouTube, my YouTube overlord. They have been promoting my demo. I can tell because, you know, you put a, a video on with my channel, my size, uh, my kid. We have a follow, you know, got a community here. So let's say 10 views an hour, right? For the first day. Yep. But if YouTube, all of a sudden it's getting. 50 views an hour. Yeah. I'm like, hmm, mm -hmm. something's up here. And that was today. But, yeah, and so Ryan was like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, I knew it. <laughs> I told Trev, I'm like, you watch. <laughs> now, now, Ryan had said, why do you have it to set to sub only? I'm like, no. It's not it's members only. Members. <laughs> yeah, subscribers and members. Totally different things. Well, yeah. similar, but different. But, yeah, I, if you like that, I was thinking I was going to... Oh, I hit the algorithm for medium foot. See, that's cool. It made it feel fun to watch it. Um, yeah. Do they have a double neck bend? Don't think you've done one of those. I have not. Um, I would like to. Zach Thong with all the emojis. Right. All the emojis. No, that's cool. No, medium foot. Like, See right there. 
that means a bunch because that tells me what I'm doing is getting out there, Mike, you know, as a YouTuber, mm -hmm. the algorithm's apparently working. And if even one new person a week, like him, mm -hmm. you know, comes and finds us, great. Because I know they're out there. Because, you know, you, we tune into our friend Phil McKnight, and he's got 1,200 people in his chat. So they're out there, is what I'm saying. Could right. be the Canadian thing. Could be. Um, I am a Canuck with guitars. <laughs> as, as the Monday show is called. I used to have a co-host. So that's why, if you wonder why it's called Canucks with guitars and not Canuck with guitar, a Canuck with guitars, it's because I used to have a co-host and I've had well, very well, so there there. behind the scenes. Come on. Yeah. If you go, yeah, if you go back on the channel, there's a lot of. Oh, there's just a lot. I can't yeah. know what else to call it. Well, the old round table videos are always a blast to watch. Well, you should be able to see the. Uh, chat on all my replays unless uh, a video has been edited that's when you lose the chat if they if they edit a live stream at all hmm. oh, okay yeah it could be uh, the repair videos which uh, the the, uh, the one of my new Gretsch that I did recently that one hmm. uh, the Squire Base 6 and the Yamaha Revstar those three repair videos hmm. uh, because yeah the Yamaha if they didn't set that tailpiece correctly, you don't know. You're like, how do I get the strings off? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And, yeah, hassle. <coughs> Easy, Patrick. I fucking know. They teased me with that the other day. April's gets a month along quite. Oh yeah, I should mention. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What Trev? Uh, in. We'll mention it. April is Gibson month that long McQuaid. Um, and they they also carry bottle openers, don't you know? Mm -hmm. So. Um, and you know, can, let's be honest, they've let a fella molest a lot of their fucking gear over the last yep. year. Yep, put you up, put you up. Like literally you. two videos a week going on now, nine months for sure, like minimum two, sometimes three. If I really wanted to push out a lot, yep. yeah, the old barter system, right? Yeah, and mm. that's also. <laughs> Yeah, I think the big part of it now is, is that Ben has outlasted 90% of the staff at that location. So <laughs> new staff comes in and they meet Ben and Ben is a staple. <laughs> I'm the gruffly old guy that just comes in and grabs gear and they and here for a long they're time. Young, they're all in like their 20s. Right. There's another new one. Well, let's see. No, uh, Gavin, the acting store manager, he's been there since I started going in. He's old school. Craig, he's been there for a few years, the Scottish guy. Mm -hmm. it's like, my name's not Craig. Craig, it's Craig. I'm like, all right, Craig. What's up, Craig? He's like, Craig. Craig. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's full on. I think he's from Glasgow area. So he's full on. And then, um, what's his name? Kyle. Kyle's been there forever, too. But he takes care of lessons and stuff. And, yeah, I only know him because I got to walk by him to go around to lesson rooms. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, CNBC found me because of Dave. He's like, maybe it's a Canadian thing. I got a recommendation to Ben after watching a few of Dave's World of Fun Stuff videos. Maybe I like angry guys in Toronto that play guitar. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. in Toronto, but I'm Toronto adjacent. Ben's I have been known to darken a few bars doorsteps. You're not, you're not particularly angry. No. No. I can be, though. There, there is a difference in style there. I'm just there are, would also probably be a, a, lot, a lot more rage if I didn't go through an ounce of weed a week. Mm. <laughs> there would be way I'm more rage. Like full Yosemite Sam shit. Right. See, Dave got me as a subscriber, I remember watching a couple of his videos, Trev, and mm -hmm. because of editing, right? And he's just like, I forget what it was, but it, it, it was Gooch, right? He's like, well, since I'm about to take it in the dick for the next half an hour, I'm just going to pause the movie and then meet up on the other side with you. And I'm like, take it in the dick for half an hour. I'm like, right. who says that other than the grumpy 50-plus-year-old Canadian? Yeah. This smart motherfucker, though. It is. Speaking of those, it is Patrick. Oh yeah. Oh. 
UPS for obvious reasons, and Dan Electros because they're overpriced. But if you can snag on them cheap, like Michael Kraus, that's okay. Yeah. You know, like a longhorn bass from back in the day has a thing. That's a sound. For sure. You know, their version of the bass six was a thing. It's, you know, but a thousand Canadian for a fucking Dan Electro? <laughs> 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 No, no. There's no bungee jumping girl. No. No. I'm thinking, I don't know what, how big a paycheck that would have to take, Trev, because I'm pretty sure I'd have a heart attack during the event. So mm -hmm. I got to recover from that. So how much are you willing to go through to have a heart attack? You know? <laughs> exactly. It was only a minor cardio infarction. Fuck you. It was a heart attack. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show you how to get the base neck correctly. Yeah, with the dual truss rods. Crazy. Yeah, exactly, Zach. Like you at the the Oshawa location. That's the legendary location for me. Mm. I mean, it was because for the longest time, Trev, before the great amalgamation or gobbling up of every fucking mom and pop. So mm -hmm. L and M went from twenty seven stores nationwide to like pushing a hundred. Woohoo! Um, that the closest was Oshawa, but fortunately, because everyone lives right along the highway, you know, it was a hundred kilometers, an hour. Yeah, you know, L and M Schwa. Dirty schwa. And, you know, and now, because around here, they all charged, they didn't charge MAP, they did the MSRP, which is the full cent price. Oh, there you go. Because you used to, Ken, remember how you went into every music store and was, was $900, now 600 on every oh, yeah, scratch sure. back in the day. Because <laughs> MAP was 600 mm -hmm. MSRP was the 900 and because I'm not going to mention their names locally, <laughs> uh, had the local school board contract, they charged full send on everything. Trev, like they were pushing 10 bucks for a pack of strings. Crazy. 1990, 1990, 10 bucks for a pack of strings. That's so, terrible. yeah, that's where you're like, fuck it, I'll go along the quaid and spend five bucks a pack. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And free packs for like when Sean took over the store, you know, Arden's, uh, from his dad, Arden. Um, hence the name, formerly known as Arden's Accordion Academy. Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I'm torn out bad album covers too. See, Accordion <laughs> set that off. <laughs> um, so he got sick of always hearing, "Oh, let's go along with Quaid." So he had to start price matching along with Quaid. Right. I'm like, stop screwing your fucking customer base by overcharging compared to every other store. But at that time. You know, anyone that's played guitar more than worse now, I'm gonna say 25 years, Trev. There used to be a territory thing like, if Mike and I both have a music store in town and he starts selling fenders, I can't sell fenders because he's got the fender territory, right? The contract for that territory, yeah. you know. Say, so, so it was you would go to <laughs> NAM and it was a signing for certain regions, yeah. And so, you know, which is kind of cool, but not, but it was kind of like a car dealership. Because you know they're forced to put <coughs> in mortars every year to maintain that franchise, if you will. So you're like you go all of a sudden you go in for a bag of strings one day, you're like, ooh, the new fenders are in. <laughs> ooh. And all of a sudden there's eight new strats and there's bursts. Well, they and make bursts you buy a certain like, amount ah. too. You have yep. no choice. Mm, yeah, a lot of them these days, yeah. You're locked into a specific quantity. Yep. Yeah. I kind of miss those days in, in some respect, but on the other hand, with the internet, right, it doesn't really matter. It, it yeah. kind of makes the point mute. Ugh. You know, if you can move the product and handle the minimum order from whatever insert company name here, you know, and some companies it might be twenty guitars a year, some of them it's twenty a quarter. It you know, or something like Fender who has a new freaking line. Because it's soon name variant every year means, guess what, Ken? Here's 12 guitars you have to hold, you know, or put into your inventory. 
Mm -hmm. you come up with a new mm -hmm. line every year. Yeah, you you want to you want to buy these guitars from us, but you also have to sell these and these and these and these. Yeah, yeah, like oh, you want the classic vibes that everybody likes because they're the retro ones. Yeah, well, you got to also carry our abomination parallel universe bullshit one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all you can do, right? <sighs> Yeah, well, I think from a manufacturer point of view, I mean, you want to buy my product, I don't give a shit where you are. You could be 50 feet from another guitar shop. <laughs> you want to sell my shit? No problem. Yep. Yeah. Just sell it at a fair price. Mm -hmm. Fair product. Mm -hmm. fair price. You know, do don't expect the world for no money. You know, oh, I want you know U.S. Custom Shop for 400 bucks. That doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. That's not how that works. Well, uh, that that store we were looking at the other night, Ben, uh, was it Jimmy's Boutique or whatever? Oh, Paul's Boutique in oh. Toronto. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got all kinds. Like, of hey, the, the Paul's like, I totally forgot about Paul's Boutique in Toronto, folks. And those Toronto people watching, area people, all oh, right. After I was like, if this is cool, maybe we'll do a road trip video, right? Yeah. Right. So I thought, but if you have a bit of a budget, Ken, you're going to want to park there, right? In case you know guitars and stuff, right in the middle of fucking Kensington Market. <laughs> really? No. Yeah. For, for those who don't know, basically, Michael B. Okay, mm -hmm. picture in your head. The busiest place. The chaos of any, and I don't mean this in directory, third world large city where there's like fucking scooters and people just ignoring traffic, walking out, you know, and they're da -da -da -da, you know, there's, there's loudspeakers playing shit and. You know, in bodegas, and it's just chaos, right? That's fucking Kensington Market in Toronto. It's <laughs> awesome. It's all the, it's the art center. You know, there there is these cute shops and this and that, and there's this music store there at something and a half. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, great. It's still on the ground floor with a half. I'm like, what? How is that even? Don't even. <laughs> because fucking Kensington Two Market. Two and a half. And it's like right downtown, middle of Toronto. I'm like. Because oh, I was like, oh, I could take the train in and then public transit. I'm like, now if you buy more than one guitar, because you're not <laughs> want to be carrying two hard shell cases walking down the streets of Toronto. Crazy. For any like, yeah. well, any any like, because they're heavy. <laughs> so at the very least. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying. Uh, I'm, I'm like trying to explain it to Trev, and I'm like, you don't understand. Like, it looks like an open air flea market, but in theory, it's a two lane street. Which really, it's about three quarters of a lane. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's these cool little shops. They got you know, music coming out, Trev, and this, yep. the wares have spilled out onto the sidewalk. So then people have to walk into the street because they've taken up the entire, you know, and yep. ooh, a telly. They had a, a what a sixty-eight telly there, refin sixty-eight telly for like short money, five grand Canadian. That was a that was a good snack. They had a lot of stuff a good deal, but it's like impossible to get to. Right. Yeah. Well, and a lot oh. of it was consignment too, right, Ben? It wasn't just the store has it. It was it was consignment. Yeah. Well, and that was the weird thing. Was I remember well, like when I was taking my mom up for treatment in Toronto, it was right in 2020, right? Height of COVID, right? <laughs> you know, no place to so I would just drive around because it was cheaper to drive around than it was to park. Because you know, parking downtown Toronto is like ten bucks an hour. Like, I won't burn ten bucks in fuel driving around for an hour, idling mostly. Yeah. So I'm driving around and I'm just doing different straight Ken, and I covered all of the downtown grid, right? Because it's minimal <laughs> traffic. It's like let's call it Sunday traffic, you know, your light traffic. You well, know, yeah. you know, it was it nice. Was, it was it was not crowded until I hit Kensington Market. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> oh wait, COVID. Like what's going on? You would not know everything in chaos and what yeah. the fuck? And then it's like two blocks of that, and you turn on to Queen Street, gone. Back to normal. Yep. It just went away. I'm like, Bing. What the? I'm like, ooh, Horseshoe Tavern, cool. <laughs> yeah, ooh, it's uh, it was uh, it was... but Paul's Boutique, yeah legendary used store there and they had a shit ton of uh 70s stuff. Stuff. 
a lot of Tukai and Burns and even an Orville uh, Les Paul, I was, which I was shocked at. Base then, echo. Uh, what is traffic in Canada? Uh, well, for Toronto, LA, <laughs> LA and Toronto, same thing. Yeah, Four same lanes of bullshit in either direction. Street one day. <laughs> no. Uh, the Don Valley parking lot. Right. Uh, is it's the 401 most? Is the 401 still not the world's most congested section of highway? Yeah. Uh, it well, you see, it's a coin toss. You get three way battle between Toronto, Tokyo, and L.A. Right in the winter, hundred percent. Oh yeah, in the winter. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> Thank, yeah, you. Oh, not- Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's just, but not little try because it's like literally every store can be a different nationality. Yeah. It's like the United Nations is what it is. It is it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's cool as fuck. <laughs> like, you know, like I want to eat a gyro, buy a dashiki. And get strings for my telly. Well, you can all do that on one fucking block. <laughs> yeah. True story. Well, hence the TV show, right? King of Kensington. Exactly. And that's before it went really ethnic. Because now it's literal. True. You're like all the colors of the rainbow. You know, I love it. You know, you're like, did I just walk by a woman was balancing something on her fucking head? You know, like, all right. <laughs> sure. You know, and kids actually playing in the streets. You know, oh, <laughs> you know, like, I didn't realize this like 70s Sesame Street. You know, like, what's going on here? You play stickball? No, I don't. No. It's 2024. And I'm, <laughs> no. Uh, 12th fret. I don't know if they're still there. Are really? They? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Zach says yes. So. That was a store. They used to be such that they were the store. Because they were like the grooms of Toronto. Um, their head repair guy, family friend growing up, uh, Grit Laskin, he... He was the guy, Michael B., that if you bought a Larave in the 70s or 80s and got any custom inlay work done, it was Grit that did all that work. Mm-hmm. And he would do the ones, like, the name show, you're like, is that a fucking parrot in Mother of Pearl? You know, like, and all the color, you know, inlay, you're like, his work was just phenomenal. Yeah. And he would do, and that, he got to the point That's where cool. when he stopped working directly with Larave, they would just send him for custom inlay work. He did that. Free. CNC machine. Working with Ebony? Are you kidding me? What's up, Mike is himself? Right on. Never seen him as anybody else. Just saying. This is true. <laughs> this is true. But yeah, Grit Laskin. And he played in like a... Let's say he played like a dulcimer or a mandolin and some kind of Celtic band. That's how I knew him, Hep. Um, because we we're at the London Folk Festival one year for some fucking reason. God damn. My, I, I blame my mother totally. Um, and she's like, Oh, there's Grit. We should go say hi. Blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like, I know the name because you don't, you know, Grit Laskin. That's not a name you forget growing up. He's got mm-hmm. Grit in the name. I'm like, That's cool. Uh, you know, he plays mandolin. I bet he fucking does. He probably looks like Levon Helm too. And I met him, <laughs> he did. you know, it's like. That kind of soul. And uh, he was cool. And then I'm, I'm reading some guitar, the guitar repair book. Uh, everyone with the brown book that everyone had back in the day. There's grit all through it. I'm like, oh, that's him. Hmm. That's all we do. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, Dad, you still in touch with him? Nah, I kind of lost touch with him about 10 years ago. Like, Dang it. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that was, that was an epic. Why? Because I would like to learn his craft. You know, he's probably the premier luthier in Canada. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. There's a few up here. Joe Lato? <laughs> Get your Lato? Which was your Canadian BC Rich, basically. 
<laughs> the old school BC Rich, and then he did the new school BC Rich thing. Super Shredders, then. Which I want to say, some of the dudes from Iron Maiden were playing Lados for a while. Uh, I would I would certainly consider picking one up and giving it a go. Buddy Steve has a Lado. I'm pointing oh, to right over there. He's pretty sweet, They're man. different. They're heavy. DC <laughs> with a Lado. Um, <laughs> Do you remember, Ken, in the 80s, uh, as endorsed by Alex Lifeson, signature guitars? Vaguely. Signature guitar was by Signature Guitar, and it just said signature, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that's so Alex Lifeson, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, medium foot had a lady strap for a minute. Nice. All right, where about is Michael LaPants from? I, that part I missed. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm under the influence. I know gyro, but I say gyro. It's okay. You're killing me. Is it a gif or is it a gif? I don't know. Is it a Rolling pecan down. or is it a pecan? I don't know if he said. I think We're a pecan chicken. you pee in, so it should be pecan. A pecan. Pecan. All right. I'm just going. Oh, Tampa. So okay, yeah, Tampa. It, ooh, yeah. That's that's traffic with humidity. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And they're kind of like Kitchener Waterloo outside of Toronto. Like Tampa's always seemed to be growing, Trev, just that little bit faster than they've been able to keep up with the infrastructure. It's always just that, right. you know. I feel that. Yeah, exactly. You're right. So I mean, we had the HOV lane, the high occupancy vehicle, <laughs> and the electric cars were allowed as well. And now, when you're going down the highway, it doesn't fucking matter. That lane's just as backed up as oh, all yeah. the other lane. And there was a time there for a couple of years where that got you a little bit of a bonus, but everybody's got one now, so it doesn't matter. Especially in Van. That's where all the hippies went in the 60s, folks. Well, that's why all these uh, <laughs> gas stations are paying all this money for coffee. BC for single-handedly kept Birkenstock in business through the 80s. <laughs> 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 all Granola became a food group because of BC. <laughs> I'm thinking all the BC <laughs> cliches. And what. But, oh, I love BC people. Oh, little fucking patchouli oil. I, when I smell it, I think of BC. And chicks with hairy armpits wear a lot of fucking hemp clothing. Hippie chicks. Uh, I mean, you got men, but I haven't seen many. Tom Lind in the house. That's oh, probably Michael, the local too. He grew up in Tampa. Nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that whole uh, BC thing may be because of Rec Beach, which is the hippie clothing optional beach. I mean, and you don't go down there to see. Good looking people naked because no, there's none of that. There's all kinds of <laughs> old hippies, a whole bunch of old hippies running around playing frisbee with their fucking stuff flying around. And, yep. Yeah. So I, I could see that. But I mean, I, I've never actually seen a girl with hairy armpits. <laughs> you know, you don't live that close to Quebec, Trev. Harry well, likes. No, that's a different story. The French girls. Oh, <laughs> Harry likes too. Look at me. That was one of the things, Trev. You'd be at a party in the early '90s, right? Because there was that whole flower child resurgence, right? If I saw Harry legs. I check. I'm just. She's mad at something, right. and I don't want to know. So I'm just going to be over here. So, Indeed. Well, we've gone over two hours, so we should probably wrap things up. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, none of you have school tomorrow, as far as I know. And if you do, sorry. <coughs> um, I'll be back tomorrow night with Canucks with guitars. I'll be playing. More bad. And, uh, okay. We'll be uh, singing. No, we won't be singing. Well, we might be singing. It depends on how good the weed is. If you have a favorite song and you want to see if Ben can play it, throw him a super chat. Or the sing it. It's always open. Uh, PayPal is right. the best because they take the least amount. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, Water Buffalo meeting this coming Saturday. We got a couple demos okay. coming out this week. Which what? Epiphone V and a Gibby, uh, Lester Paulfus shaped object 
in, in Charles Green. Appetite mm -hmm. Amber. Oh, I was going to do a Axel Sean, and then, but then I'm like, oh, I don't think I, I'm not warm. Now. I don't think <laughs> I can reach the word, word, man. Oh, no, this is too late in the evening for that. Sean, nah, nah. No, <laughs> see. Uh, yeah, uh, bad album covers, always fun. Uh, hopefully, with Charles, we haven't seen Charles tonight. He's been MIA. Hope he's he's alive. doing the Easter thing with the family, Dan O'Anley. I think he is. Uh, he, yeah, he's nice that way. It's like he likes them or something. So, I don't know. They like him too, though. So, there you go. Uh, <laughs> odd. <laughs> who knew? Right. Yep. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, one week from tonight, we got. Charles Green, and then after that, don't know, haven't decided yet. Um, and maybe Pete Thorne in May. That's like a in a partridge in a pear tree, and Pete Thorne maybe in May. See, it, it could it, happen on Tuesday, could happen on a Wednesday. I mean, you never, you never well, it depends, you know, because Pete could agree and then forget. Right. So, I ha that's how Tuesday shows happen. Um, yeah, that was uh, waiting for Pete show that Trev and I did once. That was. That was something. <laughs> but, yeah, but we were like, I don't think he's going to show. Uh, the best part was the next day when he realized and he posted the apology. Well, no, yeah, it was later that day, right? right. For me, you know, because it was around midnight that he posted, yeah, the apology. Because I woke up and I had 50 more subs and I didn't know why. And then I saw the Pete Thorne short apologize to me. I'm like, oh, that's why. Yeah. There is a God. So then I waited for Pete to wake up because I wasn't going to send him an early text, being that he's on the West Coast and I'm not. Yes, Pete Thorne. Yeah. Sorry, Tom. So you guys are just going to have oh, to. Player, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's guitar here or something. Yeah. Oh, you, you, uh, I'll, before we go to that trail, I'll wrap up uh, you know, the niece's boyfriend when he's playing the Gibby. It's like. <laughs> bold, bold. Try. I was getting long. Well, so what you pay for this? I'm like, what do you think? And he's like, oh, these got to go for four grand. I'm like, well, no. no. <laughs> I go for it. They're pushing three new, but used, you know, 23. And he's like, okay. And I told him, he's like, really? I was like, yeah. And he's like, huh. I was like, yeah. So thank you, Long McQuaid. Right place at the right time. Yeah. Definitely. So there was that. Right on. That was meant to be. Thank you, lazy ass, good for nothing employees at the Summerside PEI location, Michael B. I still think there's an employee or an ex employee that's pretty bitter because he had that thing stashed in the back room and he was going right. to get it. Because that guitar was, we <laughs> could see the trade in date. It was traded in either like 2018 or early 2019 oh. on something else. So that means pre COVID bubble, right? Yeah. And so, and it was stashed for that long. And it was stashed for that long. It was used, but they didn't have a box for it, so they didn't want to list it on the Gear Hunter used page, or so they say. So right. Trev thinks, you know, buddy, put it aside, wanted it for himself. Uh, they, that's what it sounds like. Got, <clears throat> so all of a sudden, yeah, we're like, G -g 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 in the database, you know, and I'm looking at the prices, and they're all 22, 23, 22, 18, <laughs> 22, 23, and all of a sudden this other one, which I'm not going to say. Mm -hmm. And he, oh, oh, huh. <coughs> and that was right at the time that the previous store manager wanted me to come in and start Staff. doing videos for them and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, let's, let's yeah. talk. And then we did. And we made a deal. And that was that. <laughs> and he went, holy crap. I'm like, yep. Isn't that how you ended up with the crate? <laughs> <laughs> right? The guitar, the amp I forgot about. <laughs> this thing's in the middle. Of, of, All right. The yeah. Oh, it's yeah. You'll love the fire door. Can you move it for us? Okay. So there's they have a like a half size tool chest behind the repair bench, right? Yeah. Under this little cubby hole thing. And they're like, "Oh, here's an amp that you're gonna buy." I'm like, "What are you talking about? I have no. I'm flush. I don't yeah. need an amp, right?" And they're like, "No, you're going to buy this amp." Like I don't think so, and they're pulling it out, and they're like, "It's solid state," and I'm like, "I am not interested." Right? It's a great. I am not fucking interested. It's a half stack. I am really not interested in a solid state great half stack. 
It's thirty-five dollars. Fuck me, ring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give crap? But you will love this, Mike. What I did with it, I bought it for thirty-five bucks. I loaded it into my van. I drove directly to the pawn shop and said, "What y'all offer me for it?" And they offered me a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> Whoa! But I said no. Then I listed on the Kijiji, and I sold it for a hundred and a half. There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which some of that money went down on the Explorer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. As it should be. Right on. Go on. Although, in the smartness, too, they were also smart. Uh, a five space guitar rack. Canadian now is pushing 100 bucks, Mike. And I just mentioned they used to have them near the checkout and they didn't have them anymore. And the store manager overheard that. She goes, Oh, do you want one? I'm like, Whenever. Well, I'll be right back. You don't, <coughs> you don't mind a used one, do you? 20 bucks. I'm like, I don't need one, but it's twenty bucks. Yeah. Yep. And I shape it in. <laughs> it's one that they would we were using, you know, for used gear. Whatever. I'm like, whatever. It's oh, yeah. mm-hmm. sure, whatever. Sure. It's twenty bucks. I'm like, well, I don't need one. Like, I've got one or two. I'm thinking myself, I've got one or two guitars. I'm staying at home, maybe. I don't need it. You guess bucks. what? Guess what, Michael? Guess what? Guess what? That was last June. It's fucking full. It's fucking full. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Oh, here, look at this video. Look at this pretty grudge. <laughs> you, they, you have to fill it. You have I to. do. Well, I'm like, well, like I'm not going to turn it down for twenty bucks. You know, right. like. No, no, you, no, you can't. And then you know, and then slowly it started. And I'm like, oh. Now it's full. And I still have guitars and cases upstairs. Mm. So yeah, on that note, let's you know wrap things up. This has been fun. Happy hop 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 hop. Um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Happy I'm soon. me, Trev's Trev, Mike's Mike. Yep. Hips hip. Hip. Be hip. Be with your leg. Night all. Mike Mark Taft is still Mark Taft. You can tell by the way that he is. Every time. Every time. Ryan Hall's Ryan Hall. Call me some call music. Not sure about Ferd Burfel. That could be the missus. No, it is. Ferd. It's Ferd. Grand Ferd. Anywho, who's in housing. Uh, you know, if you want to help support the channel, click that join button. Become a channel member. Marvel. Different perks based on levels. And then uh, we'll Come see how we get in each yeah. other and hold doors and meet him foot. Cool. I like you. Come back, my friend. I like him. Canuck. It's a Canuck thing. Uh, we're a brand. I forget. Shit. It's not Monday, so morning. Rob gets to do this part tomorrow. Night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is my life. Don't let her. <laughs>